graphic sex scenes filmed in the Sistine Chapel, St. Peter's Square, and the Pope Mobile, among various other notable sites within the Vatican. Well, actually, I'm just watching a cut of this amazing scene we shot last night where Pope Ben is gang banging a bunch of nuns in his bed. And it was great because the Pope let us use his bedroom. Tomorrow, we're shooting the scene where two nuns fuck each other on St. Peter's tomb using strap on crucifixes. I think people are really going to like this movie. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything that you want by dialing toll-free to 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And join us on Skype as well. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Send a contact request if you have not yet done so, and it will be approved. It'll be easy for you to call us on Skype after that. The Us includes tonight me, Ian. Derek J. Oh, and hang Mark. on, Derek J. Try that one more time. It's Derek J. We have you now. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Derek J. from peacenewsnow.com. And lots of stuff to talk about here tonight. Over In the last week, we discussed the market basket drama to quite a great extent here on Free Talk Live. And uh, I, I've just found it absolutely fascinating. There's so many different interesting aspects of this. Market Basket is, for those of you who do not know, a grocery chain. Kind of like a, not quite a discount grocer, like a, like a Big Lots or something like that, where they just get a bunch of stuff no one wants anymore. They're a regular grocery store that somehow manages to offer lower prices. Yeah, they just manage to have such an efficient business model that not only do they offer lower prices, but they also treat their employees really well. And they have a an lot unusual, of store brands. Right, which is an unusual combo, right? Because normally, you know, normally when it comes to shopping somewhere, you pay more. For a product, you know, a high-end coffee, and then, you know, the employees get paid decently. Uh, but, you know, usually it doesn't mix that you go into a place like Walmart, for instance, constantly being uh, raked over the coals for not paying their employees enough, even though they're frequently paying more than the minimum wage. Um, for not paying their employees enough, well, the, you know, the usual thought is, well, it's their, their prices are so cheap, so they can't pay their employees. Well, apparently you can have cheap prices and pay your employees to the point where they're so dedicated that they're willing to walk off the job, although in this case many of them are actually getting paid to protest, they're willing to actually go out and put their jobs on the line. That much is happening because the people who are not, uh, the people who are protesting the changes behind the scenes at Market Basket are definitely risking their jobs. But they're willing to do all of this considering it's a fairly low-wage job, all things considered, but they are really taken care of, or they were at least, by the previous CEO, Arthur T. DeMoulis. Well, the problem was there's been a family uh, bubble up you know, over decades. This family yes. has been... Decades-long family feud. They've been fighting one another, and one side of the family took control of the board of the business, and then they ejected this Arthur T. DeMoulis guy from the board, and that's what created this protest of the workers of Market Basket, who are they're standing outside of the business holding signs they're being paid to do this because the managers are on board with with these employees. Most of the employees want this guy back as CEO. They feel like he was really the, the direction setter for the company and that he treated them really well. One example of this was there was like a, an employee ownership fund of some sort where the employees could get, I don't know, some kind of shares. Stock. I know they do that with Publix grocers down in uh, the southeast. And so anyway, this employee fund had lost $40 million worth of value. It was a bad year or something like that, the economic downturn, etc. Anyway, this Arthur DeMolis, Arthur T. DeMolis, because there's a different Arthur who's involved. There's the bad Arthur who's Arthur S. DeMolis. Anyway, Arthur T. I don't know that he's bad. That's another side of the issue. Well, that's what the employees would say. You pick your team. Um, Arthur T. DeMolis apparently took $40 million of his own dollars. And he shored up the employees' fund. Wow. So they would continue to receive the bonuses that they had kind of grown to expect. That is an incredible story. I was skeptical at first when I heard this because it would be a real cult of personality that employees all across the country would uh, defend the CEO. I mean, when have you ever heard of you that don't. happening? You, you don't, don't hear that. And that's what makes this story so unique. Um, the other thing is that they're not union employees either, right? Wow. Like these guys have never been union, apparently, at Market Basket. Not only are they not union, but they're virulently anti-union. Um, and I've got an article about this here. So, again, just to kind of bring you up to speed, this, these protests have now, I think they're entering into their second full week, or they're just about finishing two full weeks of protesting. Uh, the, the new CEOs running the company are demanding everybody go back to work. Rumor has it there's some 
uh, some layoffs going on. We can talk more about kind of the latest on the market basket development. Mm -hmm. But I just wanted to focus on the the union aspect of this. So these people are protesting. They want this CEO back on. But it's a bizarre kind of protest because it's not really a walk-off. You can go and talk to these uh, market basket employees. And I've had a couple of friends here in Keene go down to the store here and talk to these folks that are outside the store holding signs. They're on the clock, which is another like bizarre. This does not typically happen at a protest. Normally, you have to walk off your job to yeah. go protest the job like this. But in this case, they're on the job, on the clock, and they're out protesting. That's it. Well, then that's our key because, uh, okay, you are at a normal protest. A couple of your other employees, coworkers say, hey, uh, this new CEO, he's really bad. He's got it out for us. Uh, we got to go protest. Well, you've got a calculation to make. Is this worth losing my job, losing my income? Uh, what if I have some health risk? What if I can't put food on the table for my children? There's a lot of calculations that go into this that yeah. are erased when you're getting paid to do the protesting. Yeah. And then even if you don't support the old CEO, consider that you're getting paid to stand out with a sign versus getting paid to work in stock shelves. I'd rather stock shelves. I, you know, Standing, standing, out, standing out and go, duh, sign. Oh, God, that would be awful. Well, oh. regardless, there Then are... there's public pressure from your uh, coworkers, you know, so there's that to consider, sure. Mark. So I, I would think that, that it's a cost-benefit analysis calculation for these employees, and they don't really have uh, as much at stake as it it's seems. It's true, not immediately, but there still is the risk that the, whoever it is, because some manager has said, okay, guys, Go outside, grab the signs, you know, because it's the managers who are approving of this. And yeah. in fact, there are sign. Apparently, there's some signage in some inside some of the stores encouraging customers to contact the board. Uh, this is fishy to me. I'm wondering where the incentives are. I, I don't think the employees are really as gung ho for the CEO as it might appear. What do you think it really is then? I think they're getting paid, and the the people at well, management are the ones who who are really getting the the good bucks from the CEO. I don't think that's it. I think that uh, the average person at, at market basket it really did feel like this guy was a great manager. This this was a great CEO. It, it, would not, be the first it certainly time looks that way. Well, it would be the first time I've ever heard of this happening. It's it's amazing, right? And yeah. uh, so let me get to the story. Well, here I mean, from some Boston employees World. love their bosses. It's rare that you have a situation where bosses get fired by boards and stuff yeah. that employees love. But how far up the chain can you go? CEOs are almost always faceless. You know, you've this just you've got not. your manager, and that's it. That's the well, difference. This guy's not faceless. I mean, he's uh, what he's grocery been... store gives bonuses. He's I mean, right. I've never heard that before. And profit sharing. you don't need to see yeah. the guy's face if you're getting several hundred or maybe a couple thousand dollars <laughs> a year for bonus. Signature. Money talks. <laughs> but uh, no. Because these I people mean, know what it's like to work at a grocery store. They have friends that work at grocery stores. Working at a grocery store, largely not the greatest job in the world. Working in a market basket, better. I, I think that Derek's right, though, that typically, and this isn't typical, typically the CEO is a faceless individual. You don't care. You know, if I was working at Kmart as I did in the past, it wouldn't have mattered to me who the new CEO was. The old CEO, I couldn't have told you who it was. But clearly these people know who this guy is. He's made an impact on them with the decisions that he's made. And I've heard, and I, I'm sorry, I can't remember off the top of my head, there was a couple of other stories about what this guy has done for mm. his employees where I just thought, man, he's really gone above and beyond the call of a typical CEO. And so I think he's really made his mark, especially the fact that he's also in the family and has been around the company for his whole life. So he really, I think he's tied to it in a way that, let's say, the new former Radio Shack CEO, they've, they've brought in somebody from Radio Shack now to take the CEO position and a co-CEO from Albertsons. But the the interesting, another interesting aspect of this is the fact that these folks aren't union. They're out protesting. They're organizing. They're doing, you know, informational outreach. They're contacting media. Stuff's happening here. But the, the union isn't, there is no union involved. Now, of course, you know the union wants to get involved. Oh, Unions yes. out there are looking at this, and they're saying, ooh, wait a minute, we could be getting some dues from these people. So here's a story from Boston Herald. Fired Market Basket employees uh, yesterday rebuffed offers of legal advice from the Teamsters, saying the solidarity of the Tewksbury grocery chain's workers, from top executives to store baggers, is stronger than any union. Now look, wow. wow. <laughs> these are the fired employees. Well, they were fired speaking. by the new, um, the new crew. Right, but it. my point is, like, you know, if you were fired from a company, you might be more likely to say, "Screw those guys." 
uh, you know, I say unionize the place or whatever. But in this case, the fired employees are still saying the union's a bad idea. It's not our way of doing things, said former facilities and operations supervisor Steve Polenka. Among eight senior workers can this past weekend for their allegedly disruptive roles in organizing an employee push. This was actually two weekends ago. An employee push for the uh, CEO's rehiring. He says, quote, we really take care of ourselves. We don't need a union. Come back with more. And this is guy that just got the axe. 855 450 free. You can share your thoughts. Free talk live. Angioprim can unclog blocked arteries and improve blood flow in all parts of your body. Angioprim is oral chelation. Easy, simple, liquid oral chelation. You take it with juice before breakfast and forget about it. Angioprim works fast, unlike old-fashioned chelation that takes hours. Just log on to angioprim.com. That's angioprim, A-N-G-I-O-P-R-I-M, angioprim.com. Angioprim users say they have more energy, more strength, more endurance. Increased circulation and blood flow will make all your body parts work better. Log on to angioprim.com. Prim.com to get more information on how you can get started and start feeling better, having fun, and doing more again. Lots more. Talk to a trained AngioPrim consultant. Call AngioPrim toll free at 877-882-7221. That's 877-882-7221. Or log on for complete information. AngioPrim.com. That's AngioPrim.com. Find out how AngioPrim can work for you. Get the facts about AngioPrim at AngioPrim.com. Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800 686 2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800 686 2237. Free Talk Live. It's not just zoning rules. It's everything. It's true. It's everything. It's, there's, there's so, many, so rules. many laws. You can't possibly know them. It's physically an impossibility to know the laws. You know not to hurt other people. I don't need a law telling me to do that. But the rest of them? Totally inaccessible. <laughs> it's true. It's written in legalese. If you don't have training in reading that crap, it might as well be a foreign language. Mm. And as you pointed out, it doesn't matter if you can read it. I thought I had them dead to rights. And <laughs> these bureaucrats, <laughs> they just, they just like, no, we do whatever we want here at the zoning board. Yeah, that's right. And you'll kiss our butts. Peon. Surf. You'll, <laughs> you'll slave. Do, you'll do what we say. Yeah. Why label them citizens? Oh. Why not just call it what it is? You're a serf. You're a slave. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com you can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm.
This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything that you want. Just dial in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. Skype on into the show. Username is LRN. Dot fm and uh, you can also join us online. Go and get interactive right there on the front page of the website at freetalklive.com. You, the listener, can decide what uh, you know is discussed on the website. Many of those things may get on the air. Some of them might get on. You can go and submit your content at freetalklive.com. We've been talking about Market Basket. This is uh, essentially a grocery chain. It's uh, re- very, very regional. It's New Hampshire and, and Massachusetts. But it, that's not really what's relevant. What's relevant is what's happening there and what makes it so unique. Uh, there's certain aspects to this that I've never seen before. Now, I can't say I am the compendium of work protest history. I, you know, I can't say I, I know much at all about that. But of all of the protests I've ever seen or heard of, I've never heard of one where the employees of the company are actually getting paid to protest. That's pretty unusual. I've never heard of one where the employees of the company are protesting for the reinstatement of a CEO because they loved him so much. That's pretty unusual. And there's more to say about this, especially the fact that they are spurning the approaches of the unions out there who want these folks to unionize. They are not unionized, even though there's all these protests going on and this action uh, taking place. All this stuff's going on. Without a union, I mean, it's. I would say that there's a union. I would say that it's a, it's a union of thought as far as this guy coming back. Oh, I these mean, people are definitely united under yeah. under the I- ideological concept. That but they not share. the, you know, not the concept of a labor union as we understand it today. Correct, and we'll t- give you some more of their thoughts. That is the market basket employees on why they don't have a union, why they're not interested in one, apparently, here in a moment. Also, I want to let you know about ExpressCoin. You can go to ExpressCoin.com, and you can buy Bitcoins, Dogecoin. You can also pick up now Litecoin, Blackcoin, and Darkcoin, all available through ExpressCoin.com. They make it easy, and they're focused on customer service so they can get your needs handled. In fact, you can pay for your Bitcoin in money order, check, wire transfer, or even cash deposit In uh, certain banking institutions, uh, specifically credit unions that have shared branching. And there's a lot of those. Um, So you can go and uh, do cash as well. Go to ExpressCoin.com, and you can even get it done from your smartphone by downloading their app at ExpressCoin.com. It's also now available in Canada. Market Basket has been just a fascinating uh, experience to just watch this thing. And I have to admit, I have have yet to actually go down to the store. Uh, There are some people... I'm just not a... Market basket shopper, I don't get down that way. Um, but there have been some people that we know here on the show who have gone down physically to to meet some of these folks who are, are protesting outside of the stores. And, and apparently they're more than happy to talk to you. You come up, you get some questions. I'd think so. You know, what's going on? In fact, they, from what I understand, have a petition, some of them, that they want their customers to sign, asking the customers to not shop there until the CEO is reinstated. And uh, so we are giving you some of the kind of the viewpoints, at least the viewpoint of one guy, Steve Palenka, former facilities and operations supervisor. He got the axe about two weekends ago by the new CEOs. There's now a co-CEOs that have been hired by the board of directors to replace the original beloved CEO, Arthur T. DeMoulis. And the two co-CEOs came in and they, they took the axe to eight upper-level management roles. This guy says, it's not our way of doing things, talking about joining a union. Uh, he says that we really take care of ourselves. We don't need a union. Fired grocery supervisor Tom Trainer, who'd worked at Market Basket for 41 years, shared that sentiment, saying unions likely see the unrest as an opportunity to get in and organize Market Basket workers. Teamsters Local 25, based in Charlestown and the largest Teamsters union in New England, yesterday said it would offer free legal help and advice to any Market Basket employee fired for, quote, standing up to present management in relation to the ongoing collective activity to bring back former CEO Arthur T. DeMoulis, unquote. But Market Basket employees' steadfast cohesiveness is unprecedented, according to the former employee, Mr. Trainer. He says, quote, we're top down, galvanized for one goal. There's no need for a union. It's not the workers against the management. It's everyone united to get Arthur T. DeMolis back. Aww. It seems like the only people who are not united to get Arthur T. DeMolis back are the board members who voted him off in the first place. 
the store employees and all the management levels are all, it seems like almost everyone, I mean, I'm sure there's dissenters. There must be a group, I don't know how large of a group it is, there's probably a group of people who didn't like Arthur T. Demoulis, but I, I haven't seen any interviews with those folks, so they certainly aren't getting their word out. It's also strange to me that the union wouldn't be at all interested. Like the, the oh, Teamsters Union. No, well, they're interested in unionizing, but they right. don't say that they're interested in getting the old CEO back. They're just saying, hey, we could offer you some help if you get fired. We can uh, provide some legal services for you. But it's not like they're interested in getting the CEO back. That's, they didn't mention that. Well, they're kind of suggesting that they would help people who got fired in the hopes that the CEO was coming back. But yeah, they haven't taken a position on it, I guess. Uh, it just sounds slimy. That's oh, definitely. In fact, uh, when word got out at a Friday rally at Market Basket headquarters that representatives of an unidentified union were passing out cards to protesting employees, it was Trainer, the former grocery supervisor, who responded, quote, really, do you think we need a union? The crowd responded with a resounding no. He continued saying, there is no union in this country that's stronger than this crowd right here. So take your cards and go home. Awesome. <laughs> Jeez. So it's just so fascinating, all this unusual activity out there outside the Market Basket stores. Yeah, there's one co-host uh, of this program, Johnson, who was able to get some video at the local right. Market Basket. Uh, that has since been uploaded, hopefully will be posted online so that uh, folks can see it. But from what I viewed, completely empty uh, shelves in some places. Mm -hmm. um, the areas that would be stocked with produce have firewood, you know, just to keep wow. something there. And um, the, I was surprised to see that fresh flower arrangements are still there, so they must be getting those in from somewhere else. But, but no employees to be seen on the floor. I mean, he walked around and did a full tour of the place, and there were no customers, and there were no employees. Amazing. What a bizarre thing. And they all did get paychecks. So I've got actually an update here. This is from bostonglobe.com, uh, published today. So this is the state of market basket is what this is called. Just kind of bring people up to speed with some of the latest on the continuing controversy here. Last week, the latest story we brought you was that Arthur T. Demolis, this beloved former CEO who was ousted about a month ago, he has now offered to buy the company. Right, so, he's willing to put up his money. Hey, stop with all the board stuff. Right. Here's the money. I'll run this thing. You obviously don't know how, and still. This guy is such a professional, such, I mean, I've never met him before, but to make a move like this seems like a really smart move. It seems really generous as well. Like, he's come forward and has supposedly offered at least what the company's worth, maybe even more than that. He described it as a very generous offer and a very fair offer. He's like, Look, just sell the whole thing to me. I'll take care of this. You guys can go away and your you, you CEOs can go away in your golden parachute and the board members can call it quits and we'll take this thing over and you it would it would make it easy for the board because right now the board's in this tough position of they've already hired these two co-CEOs. They've made these big changes and they feel like they've got to stick with it even though all of their employees are revolting. So corporate. You know this uh, Arthur T guy, the the good one who's offering to buy the company. He has something real at stake. He has his family pride. And how long has it been in his family? Uh, he wants to see this business succeed. The other problem is the people who kicked him out are also uh, they're oh, all yeah. about their family pride <laughs> and that's why they kicked him out in the first place. So whether they'll take his offer is another question. Uh, but there have apparently also been some other offers made by other interested parties as well. We'll continue though. More on the way. It's Free Talk Live. You've been lied to. Lied to by Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine. My name is Brett Kitchen, best-selling author, and I want to give you free access to my new DVD set, The Millionaire Black Box. Because after losing 35% in my IRA in the crash years ago, I said enough. And since then, I've filmed interviews with dozens of millionaires across the country. I was shocked to discover they don't use mutual funds or worry about stock market crashes. They make double digits in good years and bad. Call now to get this DVD where millionaires reveal five specific wealth strategies like private lending contracts, how to use your IRAs or cash in the bank to make potential double digits each year, tax-free retirement income using the biggest benefits left in the tax code, and how to beat inflation with two strategies you'll never hear from Wall Street. Call 1-800-324-3030 to get free access to the Millionaire Black Box videos and learn the secrets the ultra-rich use to grow your money and protect your wealth. Plus, the next 47 callers get a free copy of my best-selling book, Safe Money Millionaire. Just cover shipping and handling. Call 800-324-3030. Again, that's 1-800-324-3030. 1-800-324-3030. The Warning Signs. At first, he made me feel special. He promised he'd look after me, provide for my future. 
He broke every promise he made. Millions of Americans afflicted. I was ready to leave, but he told me he'd change. So I gave him another chance. I was such a fool. The consequences. Things only got worse. He started making my decisions for me about my job, my kids' education, my money, my safety, my future. He took away my choices, but I kept going back to the same politicians. The diagnosis? Battered voter syndrome. I fell for the same old lies. They were just playing with my emotions, telling me what I wanted to hear. That's not right. Stop the insanity of voting for the same old abusers. Declare your independence from the two-party system and join the New Hampshire Liberty Party today at nhliberty.info. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Do you need access to money? Do you need cash today? If you are receiving a structured settlement due to a lawsuit, or you are receiving pension payments over a long period of time, the Money Settlement Hotline can get you instant funding now. With your cash today, you can pay off credit card debt, pay medical bills, fund your education, or improve your home. You don't need to wait. It's true. If you're receiving a structured settlement or pension payment spread out over time and you want a lump sum amount immediately, then you need to call now. They will turn your long-term structured settlement or pension payments into a lump sum larger cash payout, so you'll get all of your money instantly. If you have a structured settlement or pension and you want cash today, call the Money Settlement Hotline right now. 888-785-0616. 888-785-0616. That's 888-785-0616. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can take control toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. Coming up, Derek J. will be telling us about the possible beginnings of a holocaust, or at least that's what someone's claiming uh, in, was it Pal- uh, Palestine? Derek J., where that's happening? Yes, okay. Palestine. So we'll find out more about that here in a moment, but still kind of close to home, talking about the market basket drama. This is a grocery chain uh, that is under much strife at the moment as a CEO who was beloved by the employees there has been ousted and those employees are protesting. They're putting their jobs on the line. The managers are protesting. They're putting their jobs on the line to try to get this guy back on board. We'll give you an update on that case. You can share your thoughts as well. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. And I heard a rumor that uh, blockchain.info released their iPhone version or the iOS version of their new app today. So you've heard that rumor as well. Well, it's not is just it rumor. It's uh, released by Roger Veer, who is uh, okay. one of the uh, you know ma- major ho- stockholders in the the company. If Roger says it's true, then it must be true. Uh, so that's great news because we were talking about blockchain.info. They've got the new app that was only for Android. Now, iOS devices, iPhones, iPads, you can grab the new blockchain app. I've tried this thing. It's great. It's an improvement. The last one was a decent app, no doubt. This one, definitely improved. They've got the uh, easy send and receive options, makes it really crystal clear what's going on. There's a new map, the new merchant map, which still needs some work, in my opinion, but you know it's going to take them some time. They're, as I understand it, attempting to actually verify businesses to see if they take Bitcoin. Because right now there's the coin map, 
coinmap.org, I think. Right, and you can just add anything to CoinMap. Anybody who wants to can add something to CoinMap. Of course, you can also remove things from CoinMap, from what I understand, too. Yeah, they're supposed but... to be a physical location, and, and people end up just putting their regular business, like, oh, I do handyman works, <laughs> and I'll take Bitcoin. I have so to admit, themselves we, to we did that map. here at, uh, at oh. Free Talk Live. We put our mailing address on there, because we have a physical location here. It's, it's kind of good to know in. how many places in your area accept Bitcoin, even if they're yeah. not retail establishments. That was kind of my idea. Like, we're physically here in Keene. There's, there's not a walk-in lounge or, you know, an entry area where you can sit and, and wait and talk to a secretary or something. But we it's also good to know how many of those places there are. Yeah, absolutely. So CoinMap, uh, as I understand it, is one of the sources they're going to for the blockchain map. But anyway, in the new blockchain.info map, there are... In the, in the new app, there's a map, and you can see the locations of some Bitcoin-accepting businesses. There's now a page up on Blockchain's website where you can submit your business uh, to the, to be considered. And, you know, they want information. They want the street address. They want a phone number. It, you know, they may even be calling to verify these. So hopefully, once this map really kind of gears up, it'll be like the map that has been really checked out i'm excited about it yeah it's gonna it's great i mean people want this and go to blockchain.com i know i mentioned blockchain.info sister sites blockchain.com is where you can easily go to get the app right away at blockchain.com and also blockchain.info is where you can go to sign up for your free web wallet so don't miss out on doing that because you gotta have a web wallet uh, or you gotta have a wallet of some sort in order to have bitcoins so, toll-free number tonight, 855-453-MORE More on the fascinating story of Market Basket, the saga that has spanned decades and within the last two weeks has really boiled over. This is from BostonGlobe.com. It's a look at the state of Market Basket as the protest enters its second full week and the board considers offers to buy the $4.6 billion company. Number one, stores. All 71 Market Basket stores, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, and Maine, I didn't realize that, uh, remain open, but the, proceed, uh, the produce shelves are empty. Canned goods remain in stock. Frozen foods are largely available, but bread and bakery are being thrown out at some locations. I saw pictures on Facebook where they, they've got just, you know, the bread crate things that you get multiple yeah. stocks of bread in. Anyway, they'd have those apparently out in the front of the stores right now, and they're just giving away all of their bakery items because, you know, they're going to go bad at some point, I guess. They're just giving them away. Uh, so they were empty in the video that Johnson took. There were still there was still a bakery, but it was completely empty. Wow. So uh, some locations and deliveries from the company's warehouses are sporadic. Stores can stay open indefinitely, though customers are sparse. Employees at the stores are reporting for work and being paid. At least they were last week. Associates who are not scheduled to work are staffing the picket lines outside the stores. That's not true, from what I understand. There have been two people who've been told by the employees outside of the stores that they, in point of fact, are on the clock. One of the uh, employees said something like, I'm not supposed to tell you this, but. So uh, the news media, at least according to what I've heard, has it wrong in that case. I mean, it's certainly probably true that some employees are showing up off the clock to pick it as well, but many of those employees may actually be on the clock. The new executives... Uh, that have been hired by the board, fired eight managers on Sunday, July 20th, but haven't taken any more action since. The board of directors issued a statement on Friday calling for, quote, normal business operations to resume immediately, unquote. Apparently, nobody really paid any attention to that because they're continuing the protests. Warehouse workers are reporting they're being shut out of their jobs. I wonder what would happen if these uh, managers that got fired, these eight managers that got fired, just continue to come back to work. <laughs> I don't imagine they'd get paychecks. No. <laughs> Apparently, the people involved in this situation are so dedicated to it, it doesn't matter. That's an interesting question. You know, would these managers, if if it's only the board of directors who's taking the the mean actions in this case, they wouldn't even know those guys were going to show up to work. So well, it would depend question. on how man how managery these managers are. Are yeah. they managers in the uh, the central office or what? Yeah, good point. Warehouse workers are reporting they are being shut out of their jobs, and replacement workers have been hired. A video shot Monday morning by a warehouse employee claims to depict a security guard saying that Market Basket employees are not allowed in the warehouse. So that's if that's true, that's an interesting development that's relatively fresh uh, that they may have hired some. Uh, do you call them scabs if it's a non-union protest? I guess you I guess would. not. You you wouldn't? No. Well, I mean, uh, the scabs are uh, this nasty union term. Is, uh, is scab like by definition someone who's not a union worker? 
Hmm. Or is it just somebody who breaks a protest line or breaks a picket line? I don't know. That's the classical term I've always heard it. The latter? You mean? Yes. So uh, social media, let's see here. The organizers of the Market Basket protest aren't the most social media savvy bunch. The chain didn't even have a website until last week. And it's currently down. I remember that. I was actually looking online back when they were talking about Market Basket opening up. Because the Market Basket here in Keene is relatively new. Maybe two years old at this point. And I remember looking online and hearing about Market Basket. People were saying, oh, you guys have a Market Basket coming? That's great. And so I was like, well, what is this Market Basket all about? And I went online to try to find their prices. Because people were talking about how great the prices were. I figured, oh, I'm going to go to their, look at their circular. Get on their website. Look, They didn't have a website. I mean, I could, <laughs> what? I guess that's one of their cost-cutting <laughs> measures or something like that. But it seemed like, hello, what century do we live in? How can you run a, a major grocery chain and not even have a website? I mean, I could understand if you didn't have the technology and like the IT division to not know how to make a PDF out of your weekly circular. I would give them that. Even if they just had a website where I could go to get store locations and yeah. hours. Just something yeah. static. I mean, right. you could just have a picture of the front of the building and the hours and phone number. That's all you would need for a website for a uh grocery store very bizarre and how strange that they would have happened to have finally launched a market basket website right when all of this started to go down and now the site is offline so there still is no website anyway the protesters however have set up a save market basket facebook page that has attracted over seventy three thousand likes as of noon on monday i believe that is uh, noon today Their website, wearemarketbasket.com, has the latest updates, which are also posted on Facebook. The Twitter account is less active at 800-some followers. Late last week, the organizers set up a fundraising page on GoFundMe, asking for Market Basket workers who are still getting paid to help support the warehouse workers and truck drivers. As of Monday, it had raised $40,661 from 708 donors, heading toward a goal of $100,000. It's now at $43,000. We are, uh, quote, we are not asking our customers to help them out, though we would certainly be pleased if they did, said organizers on the site. We're looking for associates to help fellow associates who are standing alongside of each other. I mean, just a tremendous level of generosity there. I mean, obviously, you don't know who the 708 people all are that that contributed, how many of them are employees versus customers who who decided to step up. But what an uh, what an honorable thing to do. And again, all of this being done without a union all of this organizing you know the unions will have you believe that you need them for this kind of thing clearly you don't and you don't need to pay the union dues either because all this time you would have had to have been paying dues it's more coming up it's free talk live crashed the death of the dollar it's a hot new novel that has a lot of people talking it explores what our government's reaction to a u.s currency collapse would be and when the government nationalizes all supply chains in an effort to keep order the sentiment voiced towards such a tyranny is we're not picking the fight the government already did that we'll just be fighting back for a change this is a great book but don't take my word for it look at the reviews on amazon bernie says crashed is a really terrifying trip it is thought-provoking it makes you wonder what if could this happen gary jones ads this is an excellent book it is also a little scary because it could very well be true i hope it's fiction and julia moffett calls it a gripping read and the most exciting insightful book this year crashed is a fast-paced read that has two-thirds of its amazon reviewers calling for a sequel this book is totally worth your time it's well researched liberty oriented realistic gripping and gritty do yourself a favor and don't miss this one get your copy at amazon crashed the death of the dollar by william cooper I didn't believe it. Neither did I. No way could you professionally remove unwanted hair, pain-free, and at home. My thoughts exactly. Remove my face and body hair without expensive, painful office visits. Not possible. Great minds think alike. Until I tried No-No Pro. Mm-hmm. Wait, you tried No-No? Yes, and it works. I use it on my face, legs, bikini line. We're BFFs, and you didn't tell me about No-No? Here, this is my new No-No Pro. The most powerful No-No made. Custom treatment levels, less hair in less time, perfect for any skin type. Try it. No hair, no pain, no time Consuming expensive office visits? No. No. And no, no. For a limited time, you can try No No Pro risk free. You'll also get the facial kit and a travel case. Get weeks of long lasting results. That's it. I'm getting a no no. Great minds do think alike. <laughs> try No No Pro risk free by calling 800 952 5760. 800 952 5760. That's 800 952 5760. 
800-952-5760. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm It's Free Talk Live. Take control. Toll free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. With you tonight... It's Ian here. Derek J. And Mark. Derek J's her, uh, here courtesy of his radio show. He does Peace News Now that you can receive uh, live on Sunday afternoons on LRN.FM, also Tuesday evenings. And you do a few other shows, Derek J. I know you're doing some kind of Bitcoin show now. What's that all about? Tell yeah, me about I it. do a show every Wednesday from 3 to 6 p.m. Eastern that is a call-in show, a live call-in show featuring uh, guests from around the world of Bitcoin. We've mm-hmm. had calls come in as far as Nepal. So uh, wow. you can share your thoughts uh, about what's going on in the world of Bitcoin at BitcoinTalkShow.com. Very exciting. Now, you were one of the originals on that show, right? I started the show. Very. I didn't realize. I thought it was like a partnership, or was it just you? I started the show. So. Awesome. Okay. It's Wednesdays, 3 p.m. Obviously, I haven't talked to you enough about it. So, <laughs> uh, And you can link to all of yep. Derek J's various different uh, efforts, because you've got a lot of irons in the fire at any given moment. Yes. Uh, we've only scratched a couple, the surface of a couple of them. DerekJ.me. Yes, that's my personal blog. You can find all the projects I've ever done at DerekJ.me. All right, let's continue here, um, and also want to remind you about ProXPN. That is a global virtual private network that encrypts your online data, and that means that your internet service provider, which is likely right now logging everything that you do, probably every website you visit, all the search terms you're entering, uh, they're keeping that information, in some cases, as long as five years. You can stop that from happening and also prevent others who might be wanting to snoop from getting your data, like uh, somebody with a Wi-Fi packet sniffer, maybe a nasty administrator who wants to snoop on you at uh, at work or perhaps at the coffee shop. That encryption helps protect you. ProXPN.com slash FTL. That's where you can go get their free software. It's available for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, and Android devices. Linux users, you can get ProXPN working as well. Setup's a little bit different for you. Go to ProXPN.com slash FTL. And when you're ready to upgrade to premium, because you can start for free and kind of test it out with limited bandwidth. When you upgrade to premium, you get unlimited bandwidth servers around the world to connect to. And you can even privately torrent through ProXPN. Just go to ProXPN.com slash FTL. Get signed up and then use code FTL20 to get that 20% off for the lifetime of the account. 
That's FTL20, and if you buy the uh, the yearly package, that brings the price down to 5 bucks a month. So it's a great deal, and they don't keep records of your online surfing habits. Seven-day money-back guarantee at ProXPN.com slash FTL. A little bit more here about the situation at Market Basket. It is a grocery chain in the Northeast, northern New England, actually. Um, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Maine. Maine. I guess Massachusetts isn't northern New England, is it? No. Okay. Well, northern New England's basically Vermont, uh, Massachusetts, and or excuse me, Vermont, uh, New Hampshire, and Maine. So, New England uh, grocery chain that has been embroiled in family drama for decades, court decisions, two sides of a family fighting over things. Finally, one side gets uh, gets in control and gives the axe to a longtime beloved CEO, Arthur T. DeMullis. Uh, the employees are on strike, basically. They are walking out, sort of, even though some of them are getting paid. Uh, basically, the entire chain is supporting the reinstatement of this CEO, and that has resulted in some very unusual things happening, like employees protesting for a CEO. What reason did the board give for firing this guy? Because obviously they've upset a lot of people, so they better have a good reason That's for getting rid of this guy. That's question. I mean, I've read a lot about this case over the last week, and I didn't see any kind of statement about his firing. Like, I would uh, like to see the board step up and say, hey, guys, look, we're, we're going to bat for you, the employees. We, we're looking out for your best interest. We fired this guy it, because though. there's something wrong. They think the employees, or at least the, the perspective I've read, is that, uh, that this board wants to squeeze as much money out of the overhead of the company as possible, and they want to like get rid of, you know, cut the paychecks of people, and they're afraid. Like The employees are afraid about what's coming because oh, they've man. been treated so well by this CEO, and they don't think that the board has the same interests uh, at heart. Yeah, so I suspect they're right. That's the that's the summary of what I understand. Obviously, every employee is different, and some of them have may have different opinions about this. But it is interesting to see, you know, some of them are speaking out and saying, "Look, unions, stay away. We don't have any need for you here." They're pointing out they can organize on their own, and they are. They uh, one of the points here from this six point uh, article in Boston Globe shows that they've now raised $40,000, ostensibly from other employees. So they want to help the warehouse workers who've been laid off, truck drivers who are also, I guess, having a tough time. Rumor has it that the warehouse workers are being replaced by the corp, uh, the corporate stat, like the CEOs are coming in and axing the people at the warehouses. So they've almost raised you know half of their $100,000 goal here towards actually just giving some of this money to these employees. These are the employees who are organizing to help the other employees without the assistance of the unions. Protest number four here from this, uh, this article, The State of Market Basket. Organizers have staged three major rallies, each bigger than the last in 10 days. Friday's rally, which attracted 6,000 to 7,000 workers, customers, and family members, according to unofficial police estimates, was billed as our biggest and final rally, and no more actions are scheduled at the moment. So they've been going to the headquarters of market baskets where these CEO types will purportedly be seeing them when they come and leave uh, from work, and they've been having huge numbers of people turn out for that. Number five, the board of directors is scheduled to meet today at 6 o'clock by telephone to address the... <laughs> I bet that's because they don't want to meet in person and be, you know, verbally assaulted by throngs of people who are less than happy with them. Sure. There could be a food fight. <laughs> they are there's plenty of old food sitting around right now by telephone meeting to address the turmoil enveloping the grocery chain and the offer to purchase it from their ousted CEO Arthur T. DeMullis along with other offers it has subsequently received they're under considerable pressure the chain is losing as much as 10 million dollars a day in sales and spoiled products because of the walkout and the boycott that's going to put a lot of pressure on the board yeah, absolutely. And that was something I was saying last week is these guys are hemorrhaging cash. I mean, if you've got employees standing around protesting and ca collecting paychecks with empty stores that still have their doors open and the power turned on, I mean, this is a this has been a costly two weeks for Market Basket. I mean, yeah, I even wonder if Arthur S., the uh, guy Arthur, who the... Arthur, yeah, T, the 
The, uh, the one that guy. Oh, okay. I wonder if Arthur T, the one the employees want back, would even support the employees and what they've been doing in these past few days. Like, what if he's like, well, I put that offer up before you guys were running these stock shelves empty. You know, I don't want to buy this store now. You've ruined it. Well, he hasn't spoken negatively towards them at this point. I feel. But like how much cash can they hemorrhage before the he's question. like, uh, I don't really want well, this anymore. You know, and how much cash can they hemorrhage before they bring in? I mean, if it's true that they're bringing in some, lack of a better term, scabs, uh, again, there's no union involved here, but people who are willing to sort of break the picket line to come in and go and work in these jobs where other people have walked out or have refused to work, you are essentially removing all of the expertise from your facilities. Yeah. I mean, if you blow out the entire warehouse staff and replace them, sure, you can replace them with others who will work for probably a little less but at the same time, you have zero years of experience then at that point. I mean, they had pointed out that some of the uh, employees who'd been given the axe had a combined 600 years of experience working at Market Basket. So, you know, how do you bring in a whole new crew when no one is there to train them right. on how to do something? I mean, the that's tr difficult. The institutional memory, as it were. That's um, a good term for it's, it. Uh, you know, that's that's what you're losing there. These people know how, they know where they know where the paper clips are. Um, yeah. They know how things go. <laughs> they know how to fill out the paperwork. They know where to file the paperwork. They know what, uh, you know, how to use the computers, what the passwords are. All of it. This is, stuff is really important. And it takes time. You know, when you work at a, I've worked in retail before, there's a learning curve. There's training involved. You've got to learn how to do stuff, run the cash register or whatever your responsibilities are. But if no one's there who has any experience at doing anything, how can anyone get trained? Are the C is the CEO from Radio Shack gonna go in there and pick up the uh, you know the employee handbook for the for the uh, what is it the freight room where they're throwing packages around and try to figure it out from scratch? I mean, not that's likely. just not gonna happen. Yeah, it seems like a helium balloon that gets untied. It's just gonna go all over the place until it runs out of steam. I mean, I mean, how how long can this continue? That's the ex That's why this is so fascinating to watch because it's it's amazing. Uh, so the board of directors again is supposed to meet today. They're under big pressure. The board's evaluating office offers and will recommend a course of action, but ultimately the shareholders of the company will decide. Demolis Market Basket is owned by the heirs of the founder Arthur Demolis, the original one. Of the nine shareholders, five are aligned with grandson Arthur S. Demolis's branch of the family, and four are aligned with the Arthur T. Demolis branch of the family. Arthur T. So what are the numbers? Five there are and four? nine in total. Nine? Okay, five, five and four. on the Arthur S. side, four on the wow, Arthur T. Wow, I didn't T realize side. they were that split, so they just mm. you just have to get one turned. Yeah. Arthur T. and his allies control 49.5%, and Arthur S. and his allies uh, control 50.5%. The shareholders will ultimately decide whether to shell, sell their shares and to whom. So we'll keep, it, uh, keep you in the loop here as this continues to develop... It's an amazing situation. It's pretty unique, too, in a lot of ways. Share your thoughts. Toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. Is the Holocaust beginning? Derek J. has the answer coming up. When leading hardwood mills have excess flooring to sell, there's only one place they go. Lumber Liquidators, America's number one specialty retailer of wood flooring. This week, get amazing deals like gorgeous three-quarter inch, solid, pre-finished Brazilian cherry hardwood for only $2.99 per square foot. Or quick-click strand bamboo for 37% less than other stores. Plus, get first quality laminate flooring for 49 cents. So go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find your local store. Special 12-month financing is available. Hurry, these deals end Tuesday. Hi, everyone. I'm Chuck Woolery. After putting a few thousand couples together on Love Connection, you know that nothing kills romance faster than bad breath. Smart Mouth gets at the cause of bad breath without the burn, and you get clean breath for about 12 hours. Other mouthwashes only prevent bad breath for about an hour. Gum and mints, well, they just cover it up. Use Smart Mouth in the morning for great breath all day. Rinse in the evening for clean, kissable breath all night. You can even wake up without morning breath. Smart Mouth, for 12 hours of real clean breath, look for the green box at your favorite store. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges start a conversation with your neighbor or your doctor or your family or your school. Now there's teachers and lawyers and business executives and they all wear shiny badges and they all reject the state. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges show the world that you reject coercion and aggression and oppression by the state. Shinybadges.com 
DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagen with your Liberty Beat for Monday, July 28, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,305. Silver opened at $20.68. And Bitcoin is trading around $576. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Accountable Authority, now offering a public database of police abuse and misconduct. Find them online at accountableauthority.com. In the news, Texans for Accountable Government will be having their meeting tonight, Monday, July 28th, at Sherlock's Baker Street Pub at 7 p.m. On the agenda is Ed Heimlich with Honor Quest, Heather Fazio for Marijuana Policy Project, Rachel Connie on winning elections. Dr. Norman Horn will be discussing the upcoming Christians for Liberty event, along with special guest Dr. Laura Presley, city council candidate for District 4. The Liberty Beat's own Justin Armand will be emceeing the event, so be there tonight, July 28th, Sherlock's Baker Street Pub, 7 p.m. Texans for Accountable Government is a political action committee dedicated to creating a more free and prosperous Texas. More info at tagtexas.org. On Saturday, a federal judge ruled Washington, D.C.'s ban on carrying guns outside the home to be unconstitutional. Reuters reports that Judge Frederick Scullin found no basis for the court to conclude that the ban was constitutional. The ruling is the most recent action from the five-year-old case, Palmer v. District of Columbia. In an interview with investigative reporter Julie Wilson, friends of two Austin men arrested on charges of terrorism last month shed light on the suspects' lives, claiming their religious beliefs were far from extreme. One of the friends said the former UT student praised America for its liberties and felt that Austin, Texas was the safest place for a Muslim to live. Now, both men have pleaded guilty to the charges, but their sentencing hearing has not yet been scheduled. Pleading guilty was, quote, the path of least resistance, end quote, said one friend, adding that the student likely wanted to spare his family the expenses and heartache of a trial. For the complete detailed story, go to thelibertybeat.com. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from My Magic Mud, all natural teeth whitener. Go to mymagicmud.com and hear a short interview with Dr. Griffin Cole. That's mymagicmud.com. And support comes from Brave New Books, now offering Pro Pure Water Filtration, the only gravity driven, all in one fluoride removal system that also alkalizes the water. Find them in Austin, 1904 Guadalupe Street, or visit them online at bravenewbookstore.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, July 28th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. The Independent reports that according to leaked source code of the NSA's X-Keyscore software, people who search the web for information related to privacy protection services will be targeted for surveillance by the spy agency. Individuals that search for services like Tor, the most popular form of anonymizing software, have their IP addresses logged by the NSA and can be flagged for further monitoring. Tor, also known as the Onion Router, was originally funded by the U.S. military. Excess use of glyphosate on GM soybean crops and an action by local doctors has left two children dead in Paraguay, reports Sustainable Plus. At least another 33 were injured and showed symptoms of poisoning. A three-year-old and her six-month-old sister reportedly died soon after farmers sprayed their fields with glyphosate, meant to kill off weeds before planting the crops. Although autopsies have not been completed, government officials allege a respiratory virus to be the cause of death. According to a report by KXAN, Austin Interfaith, a nonpartisan network of congregations, unions, and public schools, told representatives of the Travis County Commissioner's meeting last week that Austin is an ideal place for undocumented children to be housed. The spokeswoman says they want to use the Austin Convention Center to shelter migrant children. However, legally, the county cannot go and bring children into the city. 
Judge Samuel Bisco of the Travis County Commissioner's Court said he had concerns about spending local taxpayer dollars on out-of-county children. While the county is not actively preparing for the arrival of migrant children, donations are being accepted at St. James Episcopal Church on Weberville Road and Keller Williams Austin Northwest on Research Boulevard. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Mass Appeal. Affordable, high-quality printing, now accepting Bitcoin. Online, MassAppealInc.com. And support comes from GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. Homegrown food on every table. That's GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, July 28th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. Zoo visitors watch the mating rituals of the ice cream shop staff, and a serious co-worker puts on headphones to focus on his sandwich. Happiness is perpetually fleeting, so try to savor the next few minutes before it disappears once again. This is the Onion Week in Review. FBI officials announced they just can't bring themselves to bust a man who recently downloaded every season of the 1990s television show Picket Fences from a BitTorrent website. While stressing that pirating copyrighted material is strictly illegal, federal authorities expressed their sympathy for the man and claimed that perhaps the story of Sheriff Jimmy Brock and the strange events in a small Wisconsin town is all he has left to cling to. We have more than enough evidence to bust him for piracy, but if the poor guy really wants to watch all four seasons of a 20-year-old CBS drama that nobody remembers, He's clearly going through a pretty big rough patch right now. And frankly, we don't need to make it any worse. For statistical purposes, we have seized all private data from your personal computer and we are disgusted with your recent internet search history. You sick f For more, keep checking theonion.com. Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever you want by dialing toll-free our number 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733, and you can join us online. Just go to freetalklive.com to enjoy the features that are waiting for you there. With you tonight, Ian here, Derek J. And Mark. So, all kinds of stuff on the table to discuss tonight. Coming up, happy birthday. Um, apparently, the status, the legal status of the song, the happy birthday song that many of you have probably been sung or sung at sung to others at some point in your life. There was always a lot of fear over singing that at restaurants because of uh, copyright, and Mark's got an update on happy birthday here in a few moments. But Derek J., before the show, you said you'd seen a headline uh, that was interesting to you about the beginning of a new holocaust. It was the front page of drudgereport.com said beginnings of holocaust. I had to click. It was the, the very front page story, and it's from the Jerusalem Post. And indeed, the headline is, we are looking at the beginnings of a Holocaust. Yikes. Now, this tricked me, and I'm going to let people know that uh, I feel fooled by this headline, so don't be fooled yourself. Um, this is a, a, a tactic that's being used by the politicians there, mm -hmm. you know, rightly to draw attention to some of the crimes that are taking place against the the racism that um, inevitably gets swept up in these wars. You know, I want to be clear to all listeners, I oppose war totally. So I'm not on side Israel, side Palestine, I'm on side human. I want people to live and be free. Uh, but I like that. Unfortunately, there are people dying on both sides and Israel is the government of Israel is taking part in that. And it's causing a lot of confusion for the people in Europe who are a little bit racist and they're saying, oh, it's all you Jews who are doing this. Well, no, the Jews in Belgium are not committing wars against uh, the people in Palestine. They just happen to be of Jewish descent. That doesn't make them Israeli. That doesn't mean they support the Israeli government. Mm -hmm. Even though you might be an Israeli citizen, it doesn't mean you support the actions of the Israeli government. It is ridiculous. There was the situation in France where they sort of went after Jewish people, and I assume it had to do with this uh, situation going on between Israel and Palestine. Um, at the same time, uh, you know, uh, being somebody who is uh, nominally Jewish, I can say that, you know, Jews, I can. I think anybody can say this, Jews tend to disproportionately support the uh, the state of Israel as though it uh, is somehow, you know, just or whatever. And I think that there's a, there's a lot of problems in this whole situation. I don't nobody, know. Nobody should be being attacked for what politicians are doing in some faraway land, except those politicians themselves, perhaps. Uh, certainly, I oppose any violence uh, towards politicians or towards anyone, but 
at least hold responsible the people who are actually ma- giving orders to lob these bombs and missiles. So the um, Israeli, I don't know what the leadership is called, the prime ministers, or they have a president of their Israeli Jewish Congress. His name is Vladimir Slonsker, and he's the one who said uh, it's becoming a Holocaust situation. He says, the situation facing European Jewry is, quote, simply intolerable, unacceptable, and inexcusable. And he was meeting with uh, foreign diplomats at a special session uh, in Israel and calling the rise in anti-Semitic incidents accompanying Israel's invasion of Gaza an SOS situation, and he warned that if left unchecked, such behavior could lead to another European genocide. Never before since the Holocaust have we seen such a situation as today, he said, referring to the continent-wide demonstrations by pro-Palestinian activists, a number of which have generated into violence, and many of which have featured racist rhetoric. Sorry about that there. So, it is... uh, concerning that there is violence happening on both sides this article seems to be a little one-sided mm-hmm. but it's hard to is... find non-one-sided uh discussions about this conflict well consider that it's coming from the jerusalem post is yeah. israel's best-selling english daily and most read english website so this position is that uh the palestinians will be committing holocaust on uh, jewish Folks from Israel? It sounds so. like what the politicians, if I can put it into layman speak, sounds like what the Israeli politicians and others uh, who are meeting with them are saying is, we've got all these Palestinian, pro-Palestinian activists uh, saying that we're doing something bad and they're starting violence uh, because they're upset with us. So we need to, I don't know what, but uh, make sure that this violence doesn't happen well, as long as we can keep doing it. Well, it's yeah. This is gonna. It's it's a real mess um, over there. Essentially, you've got Hamas, which is a political organization um, in you know, the Palestinian amongst the Palestinians, um, and it is a you know been called a terroristic or- organization. I think that there's some validity to that. They they as a group, right? The Palestinians do not sort of say, "Look, he's Hamas over there. Go get him. Go get him." They don't do that, and that's sort of a problem. Hamas has been lobbing rockets over the walls. I think the wall is a problem too. Um, but you I've know. heard these rockets are, let's say, less capable than the equipment that Absolutely. the Israeli military 100%, has. A hundred percent, no doubt. So you have these less capable rockets. But remember, if you have a less capable rocket hit your house, you're not going to be happy about it. Okay, um, uh, I'm not defending it. Right, just, I'm just, say, just, I'm just saying that there's that cir- circumstance. But if you want to look at the other side, look, there's a hell of a lot more people, that, P- Palestinians, that have been killed in this recent conflict than Jews. So, you know, it, this is by no means one-sided. And then to say that the terrorists live amongst women and children. Well, no doubt they've got mothers, they've got sisters. I mean, you know, these are people that, <laughs> you know, they've got, they've got issues and they think the best way to solve their problem is using violence. I've got that. But I, I've heard an interesting thing posited. And it it's kind of, you know... If you are choosing to use to you know use violence, and anybody who supports this, in my opinion, uses violence through agency. So if you're supporting uh, the use of violence against somebody who's lobbing rockets at your house, um, and and that violence is necessarily going to affect innocent people, then what you're saying is is that um, my unwillingness to leave my house is more important to me than the lives of Palestinian children. Like, you could, there are places in Israel that folks could move. There are places around the world. I think the United States should allow uh, people from Israel to move here. And frankly, you know, folks from all over uh, to move here. And then there wouldn't be the conflict in the same way, right? I mean, this is Mm -hmm. a generations-old conflict based on the fact that, um, you know, some people believe that the British stole the land for Israel from rightful owners like uh, Palestinians and... Uh, you know, and the bit of British probably did do some, steal some land from people. Well, it's sad, and there's a lot of history that goes and in, is involved here. But it's not Jewish store owners who are sending tanks across these lines. It's it's politicians who Indeed. are ordering. But these. they're doing it with a lot of support from a lot of people. I mean, yeah, but the the people in the streets who are attacking one another. For example, you mentioned uh, the Palestinian suburb in France, which uh, had a synagogue and Jewish stores were attacked and targeted uh, because it's it's in a Palestinian 
Palestinian area and it's got a Jewish uh, shop owner. Yeah, so it's, it's going to be attacked. Well, they have nothing to do with each other. They mm. should hands off. You know, the, stop the violence. The cycle of violence has to end somewhere. And I hope that people in Europe and around the world can recognize that they are not their politicians, that they are not their government. Mm. Because uh, just because a store owner is in a Palestinian suburb doesn't mean he wants to roll a tank through your window. Such an important paradigm shift, and I hope you're right. I mean, I know how difficult it can be for people within the liberty movement who know that we're not the politicians uh, to disabuse themselves of terms like we when it comes to talking about the politicians. As long as people continue to associate themselves in commonplace speaking when they're just talking with their friends or their coworkers. And, you know, talking about how we did this and we did that when you're talking about really the U.S. military or the politicians doing something. We're sending uh, money to Israel or we're, you know, no. helping the Palestinians, right? No. that's Those are no, the things not. that people say, though. Right. That, right. People say that and it's so unconscious that even when you are made aware of it, as I will point out on this show... Frequently, nauseum. not often as I could, <laughs> mind you, not often as I could. Because Can you believe Ian holds his tongue every once yeah. in a while? Oh, every now and then it's just like, ah, oh, it's just not worth putting it in here. <laughs> it even had to be pointed out to Ron Paul. I, it, not a shock. I just heard Ron Paul using those terminology the other day. So well, he has worked for the government. That's true. When he says it, it's actually true. When Ron Paul <laughs> says, when we do this, well, I guess... Not anymore. He doesn't work for him anymore. Well, it depends um, on uh, you. But for a I long think you time, can ally. You can ally psychologically, though. Toll free number. Well, that's the problem. Is we need to break that uh, alliance, and we need to. Uh, well, let's continue here in moments. Free talk live. Crashed. The Death of the Dollar. It's a hot new novel that has a lot of people talking. It explores what our government's reaction to a U.S. currency collapse would be. And when the government nationalizes all supply chains in an effort to keep order, the sentiment voiced towards such a tyranny is, we're not picking the fight. The government already did that. We'll just be fighting back for a change. This is a great book, but don't take my word for it. Look at the reviews on Amazon. Bernie says, Crashed is a really terrifying trip. It is thought-provoking. It makes you wonder, what if? Could this happen? Gary Jones ads this is an excellent book it is also a little scary because it could very well be true i hope it's fiction and julia moffett calls it a gripping read and the most exciting insightful book this year crashed is a fast-paced read that has two-thirds of its amazon reviewers calling for a sequel this book is totally worth your time it's well researched liberty oriented realistic gripping and gritty do yourself a favor and don't miss this one get your copy at amazon crashed the death of the dollar by william cooper Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. 
The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Do you love coffee as much as I love coffee? Here's a delicious way to drink the best of the best coffee and make a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox Coffee. And you can try a pound for free. All you do is cover shipping. It's organic, shade-grown, top 1% Arabica grade. 10% of future purchases help our efforts to give the gift of human freedom through at least 100 microloans via World Vision. For more information, go to coffee.freetalklive.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you'd like by dialing in toll free. The number is 855 450 free. Saggy Pants Crackdown coming to Florida. We'll uh, give you the details on that, plus an update on the legal status of happy birthday. Toll free number is 855 450 free. We've got Skype. You can Skype into the show. Our username is lrn.fm. And, of course, you can join us online and get interactive at freetalklive.com. And if you want to get yourself a free pound of some of the best coffee out there, go to coffee.freetalklive.com. It is coffee from BuzzBox, and it's shade-grown, 100% organic, and top 1% grade Arabica. Now, BuzzBox does something that's unique. They provide you great coffee, and they make people in uh, really difficult parts of the world give them an opportunity to have a better life for themselves because they've teamed up with World Vision to finance microloans. So Free Talk Live listeners, BuzzBox, World Vision, all together financing microloans for folks in those difficult parts of the world to help them improve or start businesses. And you can help that happen by ordering coffee and enjoying a coffee over at coffee.freetalklive.com. In fact, for every 10 listeners that does that, we can finance one microloan. Plus, BuzzBox has also set up a co-op that allows people around the world to buy in to their coffee cooperative. You can uh, just pay the shipping costs. That's all you got to do. Otherwise, the pound itself is free over at coffee.freetalklive.com. You'll get on the auto ship program, which you can cancel at any time. But if you don't, you'll continue to receive delicious BuzzBox coffee. You can uh, customize. Actually, as I understand it, after you order the first pound, more options become available to you uh, to uh, to actually buy the coffee on a regular That's basis. That's true. Um, and then also uh, you can adjust the frequency of the delivery of the coffee. It's very amount, convenient. You'll, you'll figure out over time how much coffee you use in a, in exactly. a given month. So check it out. Get a free pound of coffee. Just pay the shipping cost over at coffee.freetalklive.com and help improve people's lives. Let's go to Jimmy. He's in Arizona. You're on Free Talk Live. Jimmy. Hey, how y'all doing? Hey, uh, good, good. Uh, first time caller. Uh, never listened to your show before. <laughs> uh, yeah, hey, uh, I just want to give a quick uh, shout out to Dick Cheney. Oh, and uh, I know he's listening. Yeah, he's a regular listener, uh, actually. Calls, calls I would imagine. I hear he goes out to eat with that central scrutinizer all the time. Mm, it wouldn't surprise uh, me. Yeah, hey, uh, what you, I, I got a, a problem. I figured y'all would be good people to talk to about it. Yeah, absolutely. I can't uh, guarantee we'll give you anything useful, but you can talk to us. Go ahead. Maybe you can. Well, uh, y'all know that James in Arizona? No, I don't. I don't know James in Arizona. He calls in. Well, good. Yeah, uh, he keeps sexting me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so God, with what, uh, what parts is he sexting you? Do, does it have to be a genital in order for it to be sexting? I'm not sure if uh, a butthole is a genital or not. <laughs> God. No, I don't think, uh, no. No, it wouldn't be because well, a genital first, is sexual uh, re- reproduction. It's reproduction or reproductive organs. Hmm. So I guess it would just be a text then. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I don't, don't know. Picture what, uh, text. I don't know what the definition of sexting is. I was just kind of asking the uh, the universe. So yeah. now, how did he get your phone number, Jimmy? Were you guys, you know, talking like well, doing like cyber sex before that, or what? Well, 
no, I, I haven't done that with nobody yet. Okay. Uh, but I think he wants me to do it with him. And I didn't know what to do the first time it did it. So I forwarded it to my wife because I thought maybe he was trying to send <laughs> it to uh, Milford. No. Did you uh, send and, one back? No. Well, no. I didn't know what to do. Um, so I just sent him a picture of my dog because I thought, well, okay, you know. <laughs> I wasn't sure what to do. Uh, so, you know, he's like, no, I didn't want to send it to Milford. I wanted to send it to you. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, man, I don't want to see this, you know, but I don't know. I mean, what you can gotta you got to be careful you know? who you give your phone number out to. I mean, because these days sexting is very popular, even though uh, the James you're talking about is not in the demo. I don't think he's in kind of the sexting demo. Seems to be mostly young people, probably in their early 20s or teens, who are doing the sexting, at least the bulk of it. But it wouldn't surprise me if folks in their 30s and 40s had sort of picked up on the trend to some extent. Anthony Weiner did. Good point. And, uh, and actually, that's not how he got his name, but it was certainly an ironic thing for him to do. He, yeah, um, he's a politician. What, right. He's such an attractive fellow, you know? So uh, you're into Anthony him. Weiner, but not into James in Arizona. Well, he's handsome as hell. James, uh, he, you know, I don't know. Was it uh, something about the picture he sent you? Wait, so is he handsome? Are you into J James in Arizona? And you just didn't, you, you, the sexting was a little uncomfortable, but you find him attractive? Like that he'd gone no, too far? He, he's into me, I think, is the deal. I mean, and who, well, you know, uh, who could blame him? I I mean, thought, I'm sorry. I thought you were saying he was handsome. So hey, well, miss... you're both in Arizona. Get him to buy you a meal. Well, you know, we used to go out to eat. Um, oh and yeah, eat them Rocky Mountain oysters. You know, God. and uh, <laughs> yeah. Is that so, uh, uh, animal testicles? Yes, that's goat testicles. Yeah, that's what I thought. Thanks for the call, Jimmy. Good call tonight. <laughs> Appreciate it, man. Uh, told we got to leave on the goat testicle note. That was a good yeah. one. If James in Arizona hears this, he's going to be madder. <laughs> 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 Toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. Oh, the, uh, the sexting thing, um, big big deal with, with young people uh, these days, and some of them are even getting in trouble for it. We've talked about that uh, yeah. multiple times where uh, young people will be charged with tr uh, manufacturing child pornography for taking a picture for their boyfriend slash girlfriend and sending it to them over the phone networks. I mean, it's, it's pretty crazy. Mark used to have to exchange cave paintings. Yeah, well, you know, there was uh, the things called Polaroids, Polaroids back back in the day. Not that anyone exchanged them with me. They um, still make them, apparently. Yeah, well, you know, there's certain things you just don't want to have any place else, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah, the Polaroid, of course, you know, it, you have to physically pass that around. But, um, yeah, I remember back in those days. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. You can share your thoughts with us. Maybe experiences you have with sexting. It wasn't on my list of things to talk about tonight, but that's how Free Talk Live goes. You can call in and uh, bring up whatever you want. Have you ever sexted someone and later on realized this was a huge mistake? Yes. You, you have? <laughs> really? Yeah. Do you want to talk about it? Uh, Well, okay. So How old were I've you? Used, uh, it was recently, so within the it. last two years. Okay. So, um, so you were legal. Yeah, I was I was totally legal. Um, And there's this app called Grindr. Uh -huh, so, yes. And this is an app. I've uh, heard about uh, this. Yeah, they have these for gay and straight people, but uh, this is an app that you can use to meet other people, sort of the digital equivalent of going to the bar. Now, but, now the, what I've heard about the Grindr is this is for hookups, not for dating is that true or is it is there a lot of dating that goes on i met a, a boyfriend or a, a man who became a long-term boyfriend on grinder okay. so it could be so, yeah. used for dating but it is generally used for hookups because Primarily. it's okay. it's proximity based so it's you know it scans You're the here. area these guys are here yeah hey you both might be looking for a good time mm -hmm. so why don't you talk to each other and it uh, has a little chat room so you can uh, say hello and exchange pictures and right. um you some know, of those pictures might be. Yeah, some of those pictures. Actually, it's often it's a protocol that a person who's interested might just send a picture. <laughs> they mm -hmm. might not even say hello, or they'll say hello in another way. So uh, I've reciprocated. You know, it's only polite. And uh, then hold the rest it. of the story. Hold the rest of the story. We'll get to that here in a moment. And if you've got a sexting story, again, whatever the aspect is, maybe you know sexting was really a helpful thing for your relationship. There's probably some people that really get something out of it. But of course, you always hear the negative stories about sexting. You always hear about how you know somebody made a mistake and sexted the wrong person, or somebody got arrested, or child porn, etc. 855 450 freeze the toll free number. You can share your thoughts here on Free Talk Live. 
Springtime is save big time at Herbal Healer Academy. Long-term customers know spring is the time to stock up at HerbalHealer.com. And for new customers, welcome to the web's best place to save on vitamins, minerals, and more. Log on for spring specials, including our 500 parts per million colloidal silver, all sizes on sale. Choose from Herbal Healer's great variety of weight loss products like apple cider vinegar, Hootia and Metabolic Complex, and Pro Metabolic, all on sale now. Also, the Anti-Parasite Intestinal Freedom and Warwood Plus Complex, plus Stevia Liquid Sweetener and the Super Enzymes, all on sale for spring at HerbalHealer.com. As always, we offer certificate correspondence courses in natural medicine. Enjoy same-day shipping and free online newsletter. Log on now to HerbalHealer.com and click on Spring Specials to save big with our nation's leader in supplying quality natural medicine and education since 1988, Herbal Healer Academy. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at Keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. You can pre-order your tickets now for just $60 at Keenvention.info, or you can pay with Bitcoin. Visit Keenvention.info for more information and to lock in your tickets at the pre-order $60 price for the whole weekend. Visit Keenvention.info for more, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Frustrated Superman fans told reporters Monday that the economically healthy and financially stable Daily Planet newspaper is now the most unrealistic aspect of the comic book's universe. Acknowledging that enjoying the adventures of a superhero that can fly, lift cars over his head, and shoot beams of light out of his eyes requires some suspension of disbelief, longtime readers said even the comic's most exciting stories are regularly ruined by the implausibility of a thriving Daily newspaper whose advertising revenue and circulation numbers have not at all been threatened by a media landscape overtaken by laptops laptops, smartphones, and aggregation websites. Look, I can play along with Superman using his breath to freeze a volcano or clapping his hands together to cause some sort of sonic boom, but seeing images of a thriving Daily Planet newsroom not facing layoffs or dwindling home subscriptions just really takes me out of the story. No one in Metropolis has realized they can get news online faster and for free. This is the Onion News Network. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and we are inviting you to bring up whatever's on your mind. Got a sexting story you want to tell? Maybe you sexted somebody and it got a little out of control? Went a little further than you expected before you knew it? The whole school had it? Or whatever. Because that's like the common story these days is that somebody sexts somebody else. Usually it's in high school. 
Of course, everybody knows everybody else's number. They pass it around, and before you know it, somebody gets arrested for manufacturing child porn. Now, uh, that's kind of the most extreme version of sexting, but I'm sure there's other sexting stories that you could tell us. Maybe, you know, maybe something slipped out at work, and that became a problem. Or who knows what? Derek's in the middle of telling us his story. We'll continue that here in a moment, and you can share your thoughts toll-free and your experience at 855-450-FREE. You can also join us via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm, so feel free to do that as well. Now, if you need focus and are feeling fatigued, trying to get that extra edge, when it counts, look into modafinil from modup.net. Studies show one in five students use this cognitive enhancer, offering multiple benefits, including a double-digit increase in short-term memory, fighting off fatigue, and greater focus overall so you can get things done. Businessmen around the world are talking about modafinil from modup.net and how it's making the difference in their work and giving them that critical edge that they need. At modup.net, they provide the highest premium quality modafinil with the best potency so you enjoy significant results. And that's why they're the number one sponsor of Reddit's third-party nootropic testing project. Remember, Free Talk Live is an international radio show and modup.net ships worldwide. It's your responsibility to know if local prescription requirements and laws apply. Modup.net, you get a discount when you pay with Bitcoin. In fact, a significant discount, 33% off. There's no reason not to use Bitcoin if you have it to hook up with Modafinil at modup.net. Plus, to make the deal even better, whether or not you pay with Bitcoin, use code FTL. And you'll get 10 free tablets with your order at ModUp, M-O-D-U-P. It's world-class service at a great price. ModUp.net code F-T-L. As we continue here, Derek J., uh, so you were using an app. It's called Grindr. This is, is this only for gay men or are, oh, you know what? I didn't turn your mic on. I've been awful at that tonight. Let's try that again. Yes, Grindr is only for gay men. There are a okay. few others like it, like Jacked or Menched, and each have their own particular niche. Like Menched is for Jewish gay men. Oh, uh, wow. And uh, yeah, they get pretty specific. But Hold Grindr on just was a second. The- <laughs> so I can kind of get why the uh, Jewish community might uh, b- like might, might get its heterosexual kids to uh, date amongst other Jews so that they create more Jews. Oh, it matters. If you don't think it matters to these Jewish mothers who love their gay sons that they have a, a gay husband or a, a Jewish husband rather than a God. good Jewish girl. You're killing me. No, that's it's absolutely the case. <laughs> I you know, I, I grew up in a mostly Jewish uh, neighborhood and uh, that that was the case even amongst my gay friends. Their their mothers who loved them knew they were gay. Uh, needed them to find a good Jewish partner. Well, that makes it, of course, even more difficult, right? I mean, because and well, not the anymore. App. There's hence the app. app. <laughs> yep, and it actually that app came from a neighborhood, my neighborhood. Uh, oh, okay. my, my mom knows the creator, so it's pretty funny. So anyway, Small world. yeah. Um, it was, so what happened with me was when things were good. You know, I have needs like everyone else, and uh, I sought to get those met. Sometimes I was uh, using this uh, app a few times a day, and it was so great because you know you don't need to go uh, anywhere. CD. You can check people out first, and uh, this was really good. This this had enhanced my life in a lot of ways. But then I went a little too far with it mm. because you know you pass these pictures around all around town. It was fine when I lived in the neighborhood, but when I moved to Kensington, Philadelphia, which is like the heroin capital of the world, well, maybe I don't want those neighbors to know what I'm doing, mm. and I don't uh, want them to know my face as I'm walking around the, the street, and they know what I look like, of course, under my clothes and okay. what I've been saying to some of these other guys. So, he, that's what happened. It's when so sexting, wait, you were in a bad neighborhood. Well, I lived in a bad neighborhood, and when I'm sexting with these neighbors, you know, it's okay to show genitals. You can't really identify someone if they've got their clothes on. But what's common is if you're going to meet someone for an encounter, you're not just sexting. You're going to ask them, "What do you look like?" You you have to get more pictures, yeah. and it's common to be asked for a face pic. Of course. Well, uh, that's the part that I regret. You you asked, do you ever regret doing the sexting? Well, yeah, because I showed a face pic. So you don't regret sending out a picture of your whatever, but uh, you do uh, regret then, attaching your face yes, later on. Yes, and that's that. the key. If people are doing this, uh, I urge them to be careful. You know, you never know where these things are going to end up or what neighborhood you're going to be in one day where people recognize you. Did anyone you. recognize you? Did yeah. that actually happen? Yeah, that that's happened. That's when it came kind of, oh, <laughs> I was whoa, like, uh, what 
have I done? Yeah, there's that guy, or there are those guys. And how did they? I mean, did they? How did you become aware of this? Did someone like cat we were, call you, or I mean, what did they say? Did they come up close to you? Yeah, they called me by my name that I used on the on, on the, the app. service. So I was uh, I was caught. And I was you, but, you're not, but you're not even used to getting called that. I would have just assumed, you know, they they called me Lex. Uh, I wouldn't even think <laughs> right. about it, right? You know. Oh no, my heart <laughs> stood still. So this person who called you by your handle on the service, I you did they not were, know that person. I did not know them. Well, I knew I knew I had met them on the service, but you can block them if you don't uh-huh. like them. So you know, this person had been blocked to me, mm-hmm. and uh, it, he turned out to be just around the corner. If I ever needed to go to the train, which was half a block away, I had to pass this guy's house. So had you sent him a sext, or he had gotten it from someone else? Yeah, a reciprocal. You know, he messaged me. I messaged him. And then later we went you back decided and forth. Then I was like, do with him. I don't want this guy. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, he wouldn't stop bothering me. And then it turns out he lives around the corner. So yeah, so, I regret okay. it. Okay. So question, uh, just a further detail here. So you said that you regret sending your face out, but eventually somebody's going to ask you for that. Yeah. In a lot of cases. Yep. Was it a regret of was was the face picture one that also included genitals? Or was it just a just a straight headshot? You know, that's a that's smart. I should have separated them. Yeah. Yes, it was one where uh-huh. I was completely nude, and it does include a picture of my face. You know, I don't I don't want to. You, know, you you want to know what you're getting into. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I wanted to be completely honest. Sure. Uh, unfortunately. I'm going to do it differently next time. <laughs> oh, you're going to do it next time. Okay. Here we get, we, well, you know, you got to do what you got to do to meet people. So I'm glad that it works, though. The The app in general is nice to know. Yeah, it's terrific. Works here in Keene, too. All right. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. And we continue here. We're going to go to Liberty Phoenix. He is on the line in Illinois via Skype. Hello, Phoenix. Hey, guys. Um, hey. I wanted to call tonight to relate my recent traffic experience. Oh, I um, thought you were going to tell a sexting story. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> well, I could, but um, mine are a bit too risque for the radio. Gotcha. <laughs> um, well, I, as many of the people in the Liberty Movement may know, um, I have not registered my vehicle, and I've done pretty much nothing with it as, since I bought it and was unable to because the title was all kinds of messed up. And how, uh, uh, sorry, when did you buy the car? This was in March. Okay. Um, and I bought it from a gentleman uh, that was maybe 40 miles away, drove it home with no plates on it whatsoever, um, took it to the DMV to get transferred over. They basically told me that I would have to commit fraud in order to get it transferred over because the title was all messed up. So right. I decided, whatever, I'm just going to drive it. Um, and I made it four, four and a half months without How being How many miles? Complete. Like with nothing on the license plate? Just No, no, no. <laughs> well... No, I put a uh, the the plates from my old vehicle on it. Ooh, misuse of plates right there. So it's one charge. Yep. Okay, moving um, on. <laughs> what else? The plates ended up being expired. I said, whatever. You know, uh, it's whatever. I can't afford to get a change. I have a right anyway. to travel. Go ahead. It's true. You, know you should. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I was like, whatever. I'm just gonna keep driving. Do you know and how many miles I, you uh, made? Between, Sagan. Do you know what how like how many miles you got the car at, and then how oh. many miles you were at when you finally got pulled? Because it's one thing to say you made it four months, but if you didn't drive that much in the four months, it's not a big claim. So like well, for instance, when I drove around with the Shire, uh, the, the Shire Society plate on, I actually hit my trip meter and I started counting the miles before I get pulled over. I made it thirty miles uh, before <laughs> I got hit. So I was just curious if you're paying attention uh, well, I'm to that. Almost positive, I made it well over 30 miles. Um, I install satellite systems, so I was driving oh, wow. from cities to cities to cities all the time. Okay, amazing. Wow. All right, great. I want yeah. you to tell the rest of your story because obviously we've barely scratched the surface. So hang on. More with Liberty Phoenix here in moments from Illinois, which is not a place I would want to get pulled over for uh, not having anything. I wouldn't want to get pulled over in Illinois at all. Toll-free number is 855-453. We'll find out more about his story. Take your calls about whatever's on your mind. The latest on happy birthday and its legal status in a moment. Uh, Plus, saggy pants are under attack again.
This is Mark Edge of Free Talk Live, and I've got something awesome to share with you. I've recently joined Liberty.me. It's an online city devoted to people who love liberty. Break free of the flame wars and bridge-dwelling denizens of Facebook. You deserve better. You deserve a friendly, ad-free social network where you can chat 24 hours a day with like-minded souls around the world. Attend live interactive classes with experts on economics, finance, politics, and money. Access a vast library of books and discuss them with your reading group. Better your life with exclusive self-help guides on investing, self-defense, homeschooling, security, health care, saving money, and starting a business. Become a libertarian luminary yourself and get paid in the process by publishing your works on Liberty.me. Get tipped via PayPal and Bitcoin. The first step towards freedom is to invest in yourself. Start your free 30-day trial now at Liberty.me. I love being a member of Liberty.me and I think you will too. The first month is free. Sign up and say hello. Hey, Hey folks, this is Larry Crisp for BabyBoomerBackupPlan.com. I'm sure you know this economy sucks. We all realize that the American economy is tremendously unstable right now and will likely get much worse. There's monumental debt, government bailouts, stock and real estate bubbles that are primed to pop at any moment, which can flush away most or all of your retirement savings. This type of movement has enormous consequences. Virtually zero sectors of the economy are hiring and workforce participation is at record low. Financial trouble is right here at our doorstep. But if you move right now and develop a backup plan immediately, this could be the most profitable time of your life. Proportionately, more millionaires were created during the Great Depression than at any time in our history. Get my free report at babyboomerbackupplan.com or call 888-507-8789 for my free report. 888-507-8789 and prepare to profit as history repeats itself. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. We can bring up, or we can take your calls about anything where you can bring up whatever you want. Uh, with you in the studio this evening... It's Ian here. Derek J. And Mark. Derek J. is here courtesy of his website, DerekJ.me. And there is a fundraiser going on right now, Derek J. Freeman. What is that all about? And uh, who does it benefit and why? 
Well, I'm raising money to pay for attorney's fees. Uh, the reason I hired an attorney for the first time in my life is because I've been denied a concealed carry license, the right to carry a gun in my pocket. The reason being, the chief of police here in Keene thinks I am an assaultive or threatening person. <laughs> uh, those are his words uh, his in his denial uh, for what is essentially my victimless crime spree. If folks believe that I am possibly assaultive or threatening, they can check it out at victimlesscrimespree.com. See it for yourself. Decide yes. uh, if I should be allowed to carry a gun or not. And That's what this well, officer thinks. This isn't just about you being able to carry a gun. This is about, um, I mean, the fact is, is that in New Hampshire, th- this is a shall issue state. This man has so they claim. no legal right to deny you uh, he the does. ability to he claim. Well, I, that's not, doesn't make it legal. Right. That's then why my would contention. you take it to court, Ian? Yeah, that's, if it's that's le- why if I'm what he did is legal, then why would you take it to court? That's why I'm appealing. I think that he's made the wrong decision. Uh, we're going to clarify that, mm-hmm. show that I am a peaceful person uh, who has, you know, the real question it comes down to is does civil disobedience disqualify a person from being able to defend themselves? I say it shouldn't. So people can support me. Other people already have at GoFundMe.com slash gun rights. Uh, there's also a Bitcoin link, a little harder to find. It's in the, the video there since the page wiped to our Bitcoin donations, but you the can still donate wiped there. The Bitcoin donations, meaning that uh, there were some people from a local hate group who snitched on you. Apparently, yeah. maybe GoFundMe doesn't like Bitcoin or something like that. So they, Well, it's harder the for them that? to take a cut. Uh, they probably uh, haven't figured out how to do that yet. Yeah. I assume in the future they will take bitcoin but not right now interesting so uh, gofundme.com slash gun rights that's correct and that can help you pay for the attorney which should by the way be a very interesting piece of video i think when the when the trial finally happens i can't say more about why it'll be interesting but you've got a good we can talk about your attorney can't we that's yeah he's public. a rock star attorney evan knappen uh, he's been defending people uh, like me all around the country he's successfully like the gun rights guy basically he literally wrote the book on new hampshire yeah. gun laws you can buy his book on his website and like you he moved from new jersey that's right yeah yep so. uh, both escaped uh, a, a world of tyrants. And New Jersey is a terrible place to live if you care about gun rights. I mean, New, Ham- New Hampshire is far and away a better better place. Yeah, right now he's defending a woman from Philadelphia who was traveling through New Jersey. Oh, and uh, the gun that was perfectly legal in Philadelphia, she had a permit for it and everything. Oh, the gun's illegal. The bullets are illegal. Wow, felony, son. Yep, uh, she's facing uh, s- some serious charges. And he's the person that she chose to defend her. So this is going to be very interesting, and of course we'll keep you in the loop as it develops. Go check out uh, Derek's fundraiser, gofundme.com slash gun rights. And is it linked to on derekj.me? Yes. Okay, figured. Let's go back to Liberty Phoenix on the line in Illinois. You did not register the car that you'd purchased earlier this year because there was some issue where you would have had to have committed some kind of uh, fraud in order to deal with a titling. It was just like this bureaucratic snafu. Anyway, you decided screw it i'm just going to drive it anyway and you've been driving it around doing satellite dish installs so presumably you've been driving for thousands of miles uh, over the last few months in this car that is not registered am i correct so yeah, far? easily easily five thousand miles wow in, a, in an um, unregistered car with no plates on the front and the plate on the back was from a different vehicle and the right. plates were expired All had right. you been pulled over before that for any no this was uh this last saturday was the first time it happened okay all right so what happened so I came outside. It was about 1 o'clock at night. Realized that I had left my ladder in a few towns over. I was like, crap, I need it for work tomorrow. I'm going to have to go. It was Saturday night. I was like, this is going to be horrible, but I, I have to go anyways. I didn't get a block away. Um, <laughs> I made it uh, about literally literally maybe like two blocks away from my house um, when cherries popped on. And I pulled over, and I was like, well, this is it. He's got me dead to rights. Um, so I'm not. There's not really no point. In, there's not really any point in me to to lie to him mm-hmm. um, or try to to BS him. So he came up. Um, you know, was talking about why the plates were expired and so forth. And um, I had initially assumed that he pulled me over because I uh, California rolled the stop sign. Hmm. Um, and that wasn't the reason. But he came back, took my inf- took my insurance information. Um, I didn't have my uh, registration, of course, because I couldn't do that. So he just took the my license and my insurance, went back, did his little computer stuff, and came back and said, "Is are these plates for a Ford or for a GMC?" And I was like, "No, these they're for my Ford. They're from my other vehicle." And he's like, "You know, that's a crime, right?" Why would you like, answer that question? 
Yeah, I, that's exactly. Well, I figured he had me dead to rights. He, it was, it's blatant. I mean, I could take all the tactics to not say anything and probably go to jail or just, you know, work with him. Well, uh, either, which, I mean, the plate's either for the vehicle it's on or it's not for the vehicle it's on, right? Like, in at that point, it's either you put it on or fairies did. And, I mean, I think that I understand why he, uh, why Liberty Phoenix choose, took the position he chose to take. Yeah, uh, there was there was no point in in dodging the issue. Um, I figured it would be better off to actually discuss it with him, mm -hmm. and so okay. I did. And um, he got to tell me, you know, that's a crime. And I was like, well, who's the victim? There's <laughs> there's no victim there. And he kind of glossed over it. And I kept talking, and he's like, oh well, the vi the victim is the state. <laughs> and I thought, <laughs> are we talking about I... the dirt here? Because the dirt <laughs> exactly. looks fine. <laughs> I, I for a moment there, I thought, should I go into that tangent with him? And I was like, no, not at not at this moment. But he started. I had my uh, my fedora on with all of my. Uh, with, with all my shiny badges and my cool. state speeches, hate speech, hate speech um, pin from Michael W. Dean, and we got to talking about that. And he's like, hmm. "What's this stuff on your hat?" And um, I'm uh -oh. like, "I pointed out my Bitcoin Rebel pin," and he's like, "Bitcoin? What's what's that?" I was like, "You don't know about Bitcoin?" And I pulled out one of my little Bitcoin Gorilla pamphlets and I handed it to him, and we started talking about Bitcoin for about a good ten minutes. Hmm. Um, I, I recorded the whole thing. I've got the video. Uh, Derek J., I know you have a copy of it. You're more than welcome to share it on your site. I've, Great. I've got it up on uh, YouTube under uh, one of my co-hosts, Logical Reason, um, Brian Hayek Socrates. It's under under his YouTube channel. Okay. If you guys want to check it out, or you can, if, it might be easier if you find it on Derek J.'s. But it eventually came down to he and I were discussing the non-aggression principle and why we can deal, we can we can handle. Um, changing uh, aberrant behavior without using violence and so forth. And he eventually just came to the conclusion that he was just going to let me go and take it back to my house. Wow. You didn't even get ticketed for misuse of plates? <laughs> Not a single thing happened. Not Ian's outraged. <laughs> I don't want bad things. To, I do not want bad things to happen to you, Liberty Phoenix, but I am really surprised at that. And I'm yeah. almost angry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not angry about it. I'm shocked. Like you're in Illinois of all places. And this guy is sounds like you ran into the coolest cop on the beat at the moment. I mean, it, well, in that, see, or, or Liberty Phoenix was just so cool that He's he was cool able guy. to talk him out of it. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I can pretty much connect with anybody, but that was the thing. Like, the cops in Aurora that I've noticed every single like I've done six cop lock cop lock videos and this one and every single one of them the the police have not been your uh, uh, your stereotypical authoritarian muscle heads. Um, I think it's you. You just need to head on over to Naperville and see how they are there. Yeah, I was thinking about doing some uh, some Robin Hooding over there. See how so that just goes. to clarify. You got pulled over. You had a chat with a cop about the non-aggression principle, Bitcoin, among other things. He decided, ah, I'll let you drive it home. Did he tail you home? Nope. I actually offered to ask him if he would so that no other cops would pull me over. And he was like, no, nah, wow. don't even worry about it. So did he tell you, look, you got to get this taken care of? I mean, was there some sort of a, a threat leveled or an ultimatum? Yeah, pretty much. He's like, I'm not going to see you out in this again, am I? And mm -hmm. and I, I was like, well, probably not, because um, you only really get to dodge a bullet once. Yeah. So I figured that's probably going to be the end of my activism as far as that's concerned, especially with my with my work vehicle. But what are you uh, going to do now? You said you couldn't get this thing registered. So how are you going to handle that? Well, I'm getting paid tomorrow. I get $1,000 tomorrow, and I've got another check in a week where I should be able to get the funds enough to purchase a new vehicle and get it registered and so forth. But I spoke to... A, an unnamed individual that gave me a tip to get the title taken care of for this van. So if I wanted to do that, but it's going to take like six weeks to deal with that. Hmm. Um, well, so congratulations, have have man. And this guy knew he was being recorded as well. Yeah. That's yep. just an amazing story. It is an amazing story. Thanks for sharing it's, it and looking forward to seeing the video when it gets up on The video is posted to DerekJ.me. Perfect. It's at I was the very top. Say, if we can get a, an easy link, that is an easy link. DerekJ.me, <laughs> you can go and check out Liberty Phoenix. And you were alone, too. You didn't have anybody in the you know, passenger seat. Nope. I mean, I was talking to a bunch of friends on Skype, um, but. Well, you know, it's it. a difference between having a more professional. Sem semi-courteous police department that is more likely to give somebody a break versus a bunch of thugs. I mean, they are doing, in a lot of cases, the wrong thing. They are hurting peaceful people, but I'd rather have a cop give somebody a break every now and then than 
you know, a group of guys who are handing out tickets to everyone every single time. Thanks for the call and the story tonight, Liberty Phoenix. Hour number three is on the way. Plenty of time for you to share your thoughts. Maybe your story. 855-450 free. You can take control of Free Talk Live. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust, who will never betray you, or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Should you be able to earn an honest living free from senseless government interference? The Institute for Justice thinks so. That's why we've spent years defending hard-working men and women from pointless government regulations. Nationwide, IJ has created opportunity by reducing government power. But there is still more work to be done. Visit our website today at ij.org. Let IJ take care of the government so you can take care of your business. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, July 28th, 2014. Silver is trading at $20.67 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,305 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $580. Antiwar.com reports, despite being the public face for a lot of the Obama administration's recent interventionist fervor, Secretary of State John Kerry has found himself the face of peace in Israel and not in a good way. During the waning months of the collapsed peace talks with the Palestinian Authority, Israeli hawks were blasting Kerry on a daily basis, accusing him of anti-Semitism for pushing Israel to make concessions. He's there again, and his high-profile involvement in efforts to negotiate a ceasefire in the Gaza Strip trip has once again earned him the ire of Israel's far right, which is blasting him as an alien who is trying to destroy Israel by negotiating an end to the ongoing war. Israeli officials made clear their primary objection to the Kerry plan was that it ended their attacks on tunnels in the Strip, effectively meaning they didn't want a ceasefire that would require an actual cessation of firing. The draft plan, leaked in broad strokes to the Israeli media, seemed willing to grant Hamas some of its demands, including a allowing them to open up a UN-operated seaport to end the Israeli blockade. With so much of the current war built around either side being able to spin the end as a victory, any deal remotely acceptable to Hamas is likely to be blasted by Israeli officials as capitulation. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs offers premium publicity campaigns designed to facilitate an organization's adoption of Bitcoin as a payment system and to fully capitalize on that decision in their fundraising efforts. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit BitcoinNotBombs.com. The New York Times reports the House and Senate negotiators reached agreement during the weekend on a legislative package intended to stabilize the Department of Veterans Affairs' sprawling and embattled healthcare system, according to people briefed on the deal. 
Senator Bernie Sanders, a Vermont independent, and Representative Jeff Miller, a Florida Republican, plan to outline the agreement at a news conference today at noon. The legislation is expected to include provisions for emergency relief that would allow veterans who live far from a VA facility or who face wait times that exceed a certain duration to see private doctors and have those visits paid for by the government. The measure is also expected to set aside billions of dollars to hire new doctors and nurses, build or lease dozens of additional buildings needed to treat patients, and upgrade the department's outdated scheduling system. While the VA enjoys a generally good reputation for the quality of its health care, a combination of factors, including a shortage of doctors and nurses, unrealistic goals to see patients within 14 days, and preserve performance and bonus incentives for managers, led to the widespread manipulation of patient wait time data, which blew up into a national scandal this spring. Talks on the legislation had grown acrimonious last week, particularly over the amount of spending that would be required, but lawmakers were also under enormous pressure to reach a deal before Congress begins a month-long recess later this week. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. Antiwar.com reports, according to White House officials, the Obama administration believes the European Union will agree to strong sanctions against Russia in the coming days, with a focus primarily on the arms sector and the financial sector. Reports out of Europe in recent days have shown a reluctance to hit bigger sectors, like Russia's giant energy sector, for fear that it will damage European economies far more than Russia's. The U.S. is pushing sanctions to punish Russia for backing East Ukrainian separatists, and they are expected to keep pushing for more sanctions irrespective of whether or not the current ones are implemented. The arms sector is likely not to be significantly impacted by EU sanctions as Russia is basically self-sufficient internally for arms and very few of their exports actually go to EU member nations. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. This is the Onion Week in Review. Apparently oblivious of the dismal fiscal climate, local dog Digby is wolfing down kibble as if the United States isn't in a goddamn economic crisis. Sources say the shockingly selfish four-year-old German Shepherd appears callously unswayed by the constant stream of gloomy market forecasts and continues gorging on brand-name pet foods, milk bones, and table scraps as if the U.S. unemployment rate hasn't been above 8% for the past three years. Here we are tightening our belts while this dog scarfs down bowl after bowl like the Dow Jones Industrial Average has gone through the goddamn roof or something. you think that he'd think twice since U.S. credit rating's been downgraded, but Digby doesn't give a damn. Ain't that right, Digby? You don't give a flying f do you? The Onion solemnly bids farewell to the 22 crew members who perished during the production of today's Week in Review. You will be missed. For more, visit theonion.com slash newsbeat. is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. We're launching into the third hour of the program. Plenty of time for you with your calls and thoughts to discuss anything you want here on Free Talk Live with you in the studio tonight. Ian here. Derek J. And Mark. And you can join us online over at freetalklive.com. Go get interactive on the site in a variety of different ways. The primary way is to actually create the content of the site. Uh, that which you see on the front page was placed there by listeners like you and then voted upon. It's a Reddit-based voting system, so if you've got a free Reddit account and our free freetalklive.com account, you just link the two accounts together in a very simple process, and then it'll be easy for you to participate in our online fun over at freetalklive.com. We jump right into your phone calls and thoughts. Still to come here tonight... Happy birthday. The legal status of one of the world's most popular songs, although uh, you guys were talking off the air about how much you despise it. Uh, we'll get into the <laughs> details here. Mark's got that story. Plus, saggy pants crackdown again. We'll tell you which location it's happening. It's Florida. Uh, but first, we go to James. He is in Arizona. You're on Free Talk Live, James. It's Jim Bob, Baja, Arizona. Jim Bob. Welcome. You're on the air. Yeah, that bit that I invented of a liquored up 
Suburban Cowboy was a such a big hit on the Lionel show that he and his uh, sidekick call screener and co-host labeled me the greatest because I used to call in and just make so much fun of Lionel and his progressivism. But he had a sack, so he always welcomed my calls and always let me have what I want to say. And anything else you'd like to add? He actually lived up to those um, whatever. Uh, Mark, Hamas is not a political organization, by Something the way. Something we finally agree on, James. I love Lionel. I think he's a great uh, talk show host. I grew I don't up want listening to, talk about Lionel. to Lionel. I want, I want to well, then you shouldn't have brought him up. Well, it's on your Facebook page, and it was ironic that Jimmy, who got plenty of time uninterrupted to talk, unlike he's more uh, fun I was than you. To say to Mark, Hamas is not a political organization. Mark, they're a jihadi terrorist organization, a bunch of counterculture clubbers, by the way, who literally profess to love death more than infidels love life. And so, Derek J. What's the difference between a political organization people, and a terrorist organization? <laughs> I'm a member of the Libertarian Party in Arizona, okay. or was, and we're not a terrorist organization, nor are the Free State Project a terrorist organization. But, yeah, but I'm talking about the successful. Pol- I'm talking about successful pol- people- political types, like uh, you know Republicans well, me, and Democrats that are willing to use the agency of the state to commit violence in their uh, name. I know, I, I know, I know. I get all that silliness. I know how you talk about and at the, at the point of a gun. Yeah, I know. Just like the the stereotypical uh, authoritarian uh, mutthead. Like the cop that pulled over Liberty Phoenix, such passes for thought, stereotypical mudhead, whatever. I was so trying to you want to answer the question, I James, or dodge good it? People, uh, it's a statement formed as a question, and I don't care for it. I don't agree with it. We've already discussed <laughs> that, Ian. And Derek J. I wanted to say to you, until the good people of Palestine and the Gaza Strip annihilate, uh, literally, and then outlaw the Muslim Brotherhood splinter group, which is Hamas, like the Nazis were and are in Deutschland, there will never be, and there will be no peace now. News now in Gaza, and the wall mark will remain standing around uh, the Gaza Strip because a political terrorist organization literally wants the Jews on the other side dead. Well, what, and what obligation forever. do I have, uh, with, uh, James, as a, a Palestinian? Uh, with, what? Uh, and Bernard, excuse me. Go ahead. Uh, what obligation do I have as a uh-huh. Palestinian, imagine I am one, to mm-hmm. route out Hamas for whomever wants to find them? Hmm, I just wonder how many people on planet Earth wouldn't have been instantly murdered if the good German people had routed the Nazis uh, when they it, uh, literally took power from the righteous democracy that was Hindenburg's, who uh, they was given the power. They were given the power. Hmm. I wonder if the people didn't all like do the see Cal thing. Instead, somebody had just put one bullet in Hitler's head and one in Goering. There was and one eight, in forty-eight different so, attempts. Yeah. So I want to know how you're yeah, supporting the Palestinians enough. who do there want to enough. route out Hamas. How are you supporting I'm those Palestinians? I'm saying they should do it themselves, just like you always talk about. They should take care of their own problems. I know if I had a yeah, but Hitler you brought this right problem up, neighbor, so it's your problem too. He would be dead if I were living next to him. That would be that would literally. What are you doing about be, it? Uh, forfeiting his right to life. If I had a if I had a neighbor that said Hitler was right and he should have, too bad he didn't pull it off. Uh, what I would do about it if I were Palestinian, like I said, if I were Palestinian. I don't live in Palestine, and I can't do anything about it. So you don't feel any personal responsibility to to fix what's happening over there? Why why do you bring it up? You were talking about it. Oh, okay. Your host was talking about it. I know. It was a topic. It it was a topic. I'm responding to it. Oh, and okay. now you've responded. Not, Good night. Not- 855 450 free. That's the toll free number. I just want to know what people are doing. You know, I, I care about peace and uh, I don't just want to complain about it. I, I want to have solutions. You know, I, I'm open. Well, I don't to know what somebody them. does in this circumstance. I have no clue. I'm not doing anything about it either because I don't know what to do. Yeah, I wish that I there feel. was one thing I could do to save one Palestinian uh, from, you know, what or, or Israeli. I don't care. I would like to see people saved in this circumstance circumstance, but I, I just don't know. The Palestinians seem less able to leave, and that's difficult. There's people settling land where they have groves and things like that. That's That makes that difficult. The it, one, it's a tough situation. The one thing I think the both of us can do from here, Mark, is uh, remind those listening that there's a difference between the Palestinian and the Israeli people and their governments. So at least at least draw that distinction, because it's not the people who are waging the wars. 
toll free number tonight, 855 450 free. Pat's in the Ozark Mountains. You're on Free Talk Live, Pat. Hi. <laughs> hey, you're on the air. Yeah. Um, I'm being prosecuted by the town where I live. Oh, no. For what? Well, I have a garden, and they think it doesn't look pretty. Oh, my. Actually, it... it's <laughs> my neighbors are complaining. Um, always the snitch up... neighbor. Huh? It's, al- s- it's always the snitch neighbor. So, wait, uh, just a quick question about your garden, Pat. Is it in the front yard? It's front and back. Got it. All right. What are you growing in that garden? Oh, gosh, lots of things. Lots and lots of things. Some veggies, some some uh, you know. Well, it, it ain't animals. Yeah, I have veggies. I have flowers, bushes, flowers. trees. Okay. Quite a um, variety. Gotcha. Yeah. And, uh, How do you grow things in the front yard and the backyard? Usually, you have one side that gets uh, sunlight. Depends well, on I have your a quite a big lot, almost half an acre. Okay. And uh, there's various areas of the yard that are good for growing different things because of the timing of the sunlight or the amount of the sunlight and so on. So, Okey doke. Um, it's not all good. I have, you know, some spots that I am able to use. I'm trying to use as much of the land as I can. Now, for how long stuff. have you had this garden? Uh, I started in uh, about seven years ago. So this is so not I never a new got... thing. When did the neighbor no, file a complaint? Well, pardon me? When was it that the complaint was filed? You've had the garden for seven years. Well, it's not just the garden. They're they're it's like I think they have a friend or a relative in city government mm-hmm. and they're putting pressure on them to to just nail me. They don't like me and Well, okay. When did you become aware of this? When did code enforcement come for a visit? What was the first incident uh, that really happened to you? May of 2012. Okay. It's been going on for a while. So what did anyway, they do? These, what what happened in May of 2012? Well, the thing is, they they cite me for things they don't say. See, the according to the local law, if you have if there's a problem on your property, and someone has complained, they're supposed to send you a notice that says, you know, X, Y, or Z is wrong, and you have so many days to correct the issue or tell us what you know. Have a conference with us. Mm-hmm. And uh, if it, if it's not resolved by the end of that period, then you'll be cited for the for a violation. That's pretty typical for zoning boards and yep, zone, right. zoning yeah. enforcers. They give people a, a window of time to comply, and then if they don't comply, then the force gets ratcheted up, and they uh, move to issuing a citation. That citation will be likely collected in court if you don't pay it. If you don't pay it, they could put you in a jail cell. So I want to hear the rest of your story. Hang on, Pat. We can uh, bring you back here in a moment. She says she's been harassed by the town where she lives because a neighbor doesn't like her. And uh, we've been dealing with this here recently in Keene. It's Free Talk Live. When leading hardwood mills have excess flooring to sell, there's only one place they go. Lumber Liquidators, America's number one specialty retailer of wood flooring. This week, get amazing deals like gorgeous three-quarter inch, solid, pre-finished Brazilian cherry hardwood for only $2.99 per square foot. Or quick-click strand bamboo for 37% less than other stores. Plus, get first quality laminate flooring for $0.49. Cents. So go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find your local store. Special 12-month financing is available. Hurry, these deals end Tuesday. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should, too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237.
We all know that Berkey Water Purification Systems are the most trusted name in water filtration. As an authorized Berkey dealer for over six years and serving thousands of satisfied customers, the Berkey Guy offers amazing specials for Berkey Water Filtration Systems. The Berkey Light Systems include a set of self-sterilizing and recleanable black purification elements that purify water by removing chlorine, pathogenic bacteria, cysts, and parasites to non-detect... The Shire Free Church offers a sanctuary to those seeking an escape from state churches. The Shire Free Church is an interfaith, diverse group of people that may not share identical theological beliefs. As a member in or minister of the Shire Free Church, you are a sovereign individual and may be the faith of your choice. We don't claim to have all of the answers. We are open to all peaceful people. We want to learn from each other. What unifies the Shire Free Church and its diverse members is peace, love, and liberty. There are many paths to God, one for every individual. The Shire Free Church does not define a specific path beyond those parameters that must be your foundation. Peace as your way. Love as your guide. And liberty as your light. Learn more at church.shiresociety.com. That's church.shiresociety.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 357 this is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest Liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. Apologizing to our affiliates for technical difficulties during that break. Toll-free number here, 855-450-FREE. That's 855 450 Three seven three three. Join us online at freetalklive.com and get interactive there for free. So, Ian, we we have a new uh, advertiser, and I'm very excited about them. Okay, it's the Survival Training School of California, and you know, I, th I think that this is going to fit reasonably well with our audience because we got outdoorsy folks, and if you do the outdoor thing, you probably need this survival training. The uh, the number one. Um, thing that happens sort of outdoor is the day hiker that gets injured or lost. Mm. Um, so if you want to sort of do the right thing, the responsible thing, and be prepared for an emergency for yourself or loved ones, then you should uh, the, you should go to the Survival Training School of California's website. And it's there. They are really the, the the fact is there's no accreditation for survival schools. But these folks over there are the very best. Their their premier trainer is uh, named Thomas Coyne, and um, he's kind of the founder of it. It's CaliforniaSurvivalTraining.com. I'll give you the telephone number, too, in case you need it. But they've been featured on ABC, CBS, Australia Channel 7, KCAL, uh, Men's Fitness, Toronto Star. The list really, really does continue to go on and on. Um, what I think is amazing is, is they're... They are endorsed by all three branches of the military. I'm holding in my hands, literally, right here, um, letters from an A.L. Mercer, commanding officer of VX-31 U.S. Navy. Uh, his quote, just a quote from it, it says, The strength and supremacy of today's Navy and Marine Corps stems in large measure from the outstanding quality of the training provided to our men and women. Your expert delivery of the save of saving information will undoubtedly bene benefit VX31 and support team for years to come. Again, please do accept my personal thanks for a job well done. 
These things are long and glowing. That's just a little bit that's uh, that's taken out of it. They've got a pocket knife only field training in Alaska, wilderness first aid, map and compass, skill courses for all ages, custom and private training. Um, they're actually in on August the 10th in, I'm sorry, help me out with this Alaska name here, Tal. Alaska. They're going to build a log cabin from scratch with a small group while learning to sustainably homestead. They've got uh, this, I think this pocket knife only field training course is, uh, is fascinating. But they they do all kinds of courses in all kinds of places for people to learn about survival skills. And I think that this is fascinating mm-hmm. stuff. Um, all you have to do is head over to their website. It's CaliforniaSurvivalTraining.com. You want to be very careful. There are copycats out there specifically try to, trying to ride the survival school, um, survival training school of California's coattails. So you want to go to CaliforniaSurvivalTraining.com or give them a call at 805-503-8861. 805-503-8861. Five zero three eighty eight sixty one Survival Training School of California. All right, we go back to Pat in the Ozark Mountains. Pat, you were telling us the city government there, the town government, is coming after you. They've been threatening you over a garden uh, in your at your house, and this all started back in twenty twelve. They have been issuing you threats. Uh, so we're just kind of trying to get some history on what's been going on. So you believe it is one particular neighbor? Do you know who it is, or do you just suspect? I know who it is. How do you know? The code, in, the code inspector told me. Uh huh. Okay, so they're not protecting the the com- the complaining party, which sometimes they will do. Uh, I remember when the code enforcers came after me for the first time back in 2007. Uh, the info- enforcer refused to reveal who the party, the complaining. Of course, party that was, was a city employee. Correct. He was protecting one of his his coworkers. But ultimately, he had to reveal it at the trial because I had asked when he was when I was cross-examining him. And you have a right to face your accuser in, in this country. In theory, you should be able to face the accuser. But uh, in that case, I couldn't face the accuser. I could just get the information about the, the accuser, which I did do. So you know who the complaining party is. How close are they to your home? Are they like a, a, you know adjacent across the street? Where are they located? They're next door, mm-hmm. and they have they have their reason for hating me, and they're just. They're using an excuse that, you know, because uh, the neighborhood has got these problems that they're not able to sell their house for an inflated price. And the code So it's all your fault the, because right. because the housing market is down in general because you have a garden. That's the reason why they can't sell their house or whatever their other complaints happen to be at the moment. Well, they, they had it on the market in um, 05 and 06 for $35,000. And couple years ago they put it up for 60,000 and it, it never sold at 35 and it didn't sell at 60 now they've pumped the price up to $85,000 wow what? and <laughs> they think that you know it's my fault that it won't sell but at any rate um the code enforcer here is actually on my side of the thing and he's got the pressure being put on him by whoever it is in the city that they have got uh, the connection with. So what's the current legal status then? Are you under a threat at the moment? What happened in 2012 was I got cleared, you know, I got the uh, warning notice and I got cleared by the code inspector on, it was two counts, weeds and rubbish. And I asked him um, when he sent the notice, you know, what, come over here, please, and show me what you mean by this rubbish, Mm -hmm. because I don't know what it is. Plus, I had a sprained shoulder, and I didn't want to do more than I I had to. And he said, well, your front porch is too cluttered. That's what it is. So, you know, I cut down everything but my cultivated plants to the correct height and cleared off the porch. And he came over, and he cleared me on everything. And the next morning, I got two citations for weeds and rubbish. From the same guy? I called him back. I said, "What the heck's going on here?" And he said, "I don't know. I'll have to call and uh, I'll have to call you back." And he, he called back and he said it was a pile of firewood. And uh, so I had to move this pile of firewood. It was blistering hot outside, and it all had to be split first. And oh, what a mess! Mm-hmm. But anyway, <clears throat> I let the prosecutor intimidate me into making an Alfred plea at the trial. 
And that or means that you banger. don't accept responsibility, but you admit that you can't defend against the charges or something like that, right? Right. And they put me on probation for a year and then... Probation, probation. for a year for firewood? Yeah. And uh, also suspended the fine. And... Uh, so you had remedied the situation. This was back in 2012. Can you take us real quick to today and what's happening now? Because we don't have all night to tell the whole story. Yeah, well, they've issued two more citations, and there was no abatement or warning notice given first. Mm -hmm. And the code enforcer was here, and he didn't say anything about firewood. I had firewood over where you can't even see it from the house next door. And... uh he sent a citation for nuisance, and the police chief came with it, and I said, what is this, nuisance? Have he you said, gotten oh, well, any video here. of any of this happening? No, I have witnesses who are here, though. Hmm. It's not good enough. Anyway. Uh, you're going to have to get video when these people come back. It sounds like they're issuing you the fines already. I wish you the best in dealing with this. What can you really do about this, though? And I thank you for the call tonight, Pat. Uh -huh. Grab a video camera. Have it charged up. Have it ready to go where you can grab it. Maybe it's your cell phone. Maybe it's an actual camera that you just keep by the front door uh, that you keep on the charger or something like that. And that way, when these people come back, you can get them on the record and you can ask them questions and more coming up. This is Dan Pillard. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Hi, this is Larry Smith. Sometimes bad things happen to good people, like when the jeweler ruined my ring and wouldn't do anything about it. But when my Legal Shield attorney called him and told him what my rights were, I received a check for over $2,100. Worry less and live more with lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. Again, 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums, that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. 
I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Take control toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype as well. You may Skype into the show. Our username is lrn.fm, so feel free to avail yourself of that method if you don't mind. I have to say, Skype generally sounds better than your phone, so if you've got it, please put it to use. Just send a contact request to us. It will be approved. Uncovering the secrets, exposing the lies, that's what the readers of freedomsphoenix.com get every day. Readers of freedomsphoenix.com are constantly provided the detailed real news that lies between the lines of propaganda and the relationship we have with coercive governments. freedomsphoenix.com offers up-to-the-minute updates on the economy, technology, communications, and the rise of the police state. Go now to freedomsphoenix.com and get signed up there uh, for their free daily dispatch. That's freedomsphoenix.com. Dot com. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. I wanted to talk a little further about Pat's situation where uh, Pat was dealing with uh, some bureaucrats, some officious bureaucrats coming around telling uh, telling Pat that it was either, you know, that, that there was some sort of a mess in her in her yard or uh, th- that there was, you know, garden illegal, can't have this, the porch is too dirty. There was just one thing after another being reported ostensibly by a neighbor. And how do you deal with this situation? Because ultimately, this code enforcement has re- resulted in, the I think, the destabilization of neighborliness. It has destroyed almost, in some places, uh, the idea of being a neighbor. Right. People don't want to go to their neighbor and discuss whatever the problem is. Um, they... They're scared. And if they do go, they go with this sort of uh, lordliness about uh, being in the right. Um, and, uh, you know, you're going to do what I say because I'm in the right, that kind of thing, rather than sort of talking to people uh, hmm. legitimately. I had a neighbor who, um, I, I have no idea what the rules were on this, but he came across the street. He's like, I want to put up a dish network thing um, on one of my trees out near, because he's had a bunch of trees in his yard. He couldn't mm-hmm. put it up on his house. Um, he's like, I want to put it out one of these trees out in front. Um, and I just wanted to find out if that's cool with you. And I'm like, well, do you want TV? And he's like, yeah, do you want Dish TV? He's like, yeah, well, I don't see why it would be a problem with me at all. Um, but- well, he obviously has had problem neighbors in the past who would have had a problem with something like that. You know, you're you're despoiling the nature by putting a satellite dish up, Mark. Or whatever one does. Well, it sounds like the solution when these code enforcers come around is to have some humility and go to your neighbors and talk to them. Just be a good neighbor. Like, Mm -hmm. be the neighbor you want them to be to you. And then maybe that will open up an opportunity for them to say, oh, hey, yeah, by the way, while you're here, I wanted to tell you, you know, I saw some stuff on your porch or I saw some stuff here. You know, at least give them the opportunity to speak to you. Rather than have them feel like, oh, I, just, I have to go to the local government and then they're I've actually talk done to this. Somebody. I've gone around to all of the neighbors' houses here and handed my business card to them, introduced myself, and said, hey, you know, if there's ever any concerns or any issues you have with uh, the folks living here or whatever, you know, reach out to me. Give me a call. I'll do my best to, uh, to take care of that. And of course, then the question becomes, well, was it actually one of the adjacent neighbors? Because I, I uh, have not gone all the way down the street. I've only gone to the adjacent neighbors who are, you know, within a house viewing distance kind of of the house 
where I'm living. And so if it's a neighbor who lives down the street, I mean, how far does one have to go? I Pretty guess far. I think, you know, you think as, so? yeah, as much as is considered your neighborhood. And just thinking out loud here, I think it would be kind of cool to uh, have a neighborhood association sort mm-hmm. of thing, like an informal neighborhood they association. Have those where, here. Well, they do. Yeah. These exist. But it would be one that you just invent and say, you know, I've got these signs that we might want to put in our front yards that say we're part of such and such neighborhood association. Mm. And I go to my neighbors when I have problems, not to the government. We go to each other first to work our problems out independently. We don't need to resort to the local government to solve our problems for us. Well, unfortunately, about three houses down from this location is the house of two of the haters here in town. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, you know, that's not going to solve that issue, right? Like those people are ideologically opposed to the existence of liberty activists in their town. Yes, but could you imagine how it might change the situation if they start seeing some signs in all of their neighbors' yards that surround them saying, like, we go to our neighbors to solve our problems, (laughs) we don't go to the police, or something like that, and then they're surrounded. There's public pressure that works against them in that situation. That'd be amazing. I'd be interested to see that happen anywhere because it seems like the pressure right now is... From fear and that these people, whoever they are, not the people specifically here in this neighborhood, but people in general yeah. who don't want to deal with their neighbors are afraid. I mean, that's where it comes from, right? It's it's people being afraid of what someone might say or Conflict. do. Yeah. You know, as a result of somebody talking to them. So instead, you call up the intermediary, the zoning board or the police or whoever it is that people call for these things. Sometimes it's the homeowners association. <laughs> I suppose, yeah, but in that case, at least you've agreed to the rules in advance. Um, but I'm talking about more of the, the government situations here where we're talking about zoning, which is not a consensual agreement, and they are forcing their viewpoint on you. So they get afraid, and they say, oh, well, well, this is why we have zoning. So we'll call up the, bo- the board. They'll send their agent out. They'll do the dirty work. They'll knock on the front door. They'll be the ones who are, th- are issuing the threats. They'll be the ones the neighbors will deal with, and they'll be the ones who just kind of handle everything. They'll be our, our essentially our agents in Un- this particular case. Unfortunately, that's one solution, with air quotes, that's working for people. And I think if people are afraid to deal with their neighbors, then step one, I- I'm asking myself, how can I make them less afraid? Mm-hmm. I think just being a good neighbor and going Going and talking with them would be step one. I agree. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE, but unfortunately, that approach doesn't always work. When you're dealing with a grumpy neighbor, when you're dealing with neighbors who are ideologically opposed uh, to your viewpoint, there are people who want to use the violence of the state who it's uh, it's their common tactic, and I don't know if persuasion is going to work with those folks. Mm -hmm. I just think... I think the uh, the best option is to move people who do appreciate good neighborliness to the same area. Yeah. Um, you know, bringing people to New Hampshire, like the Free State Project is, people who love freedom, who are all coming here, many of whom are coming here to get active. I want to live near those people. I mean, I'm, I'm fine living with most of the people I live near, like the neighbors that I have. Most of them keep to themselves and, you know, they're nice folks when I've when I've talked to them. Um, but I know that some of them are ideologically opposed. I've had enough conversation with them to know that about them. And, uh, you know, I would appreciate having neighbors that are ideologically pa- compatible. And we can have that here in New Hampshire as more people start to move here as part of the Free State Project. So check out freestateproject.org when you get a chance, if you care about freedom. We go to Dave in New York. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Dave. Hi. How are you? How guys doing? Good, Dave. Go ahead with your thoughts. I heard you guys mention the, the word government. I am pretty pissed off as a government myself. Mm, what are they doing? They do not. All right. I had to, I had to uh, call the government for some reason today, something that I had to go and speak with today. But you weren't snitching on a neighbor, were you? Why are you calling them? Because I, I, I want to ask questions, but like they don't email you people. Like, because like I want, I want to get some questions done. Like, oh well, can you please email me some information? Like, oh, we don't email people. We only respond by either a phone or by regular mail. <laughs> Everybody Which department? Has email. Who are you calling? The what? Who are you calling? Which the department? What? Which government agency? The government. Which agency? You just called the government. I, I just, just... They have different <laughs> departments. I understand that, but. My thing is, is that they, they said to me, "Oh, we don't, we, we can't email people. We don't email people. We don't respond by was either this phone the court? or by regular mail." Was it the court? What? Were you calling a court? No, it's not the court. Okay, which no. department was it? 
like, because I, I have some questions I want to ask. It was the local, like, DSS. I don't know if you guys ever heard of DSS at all, whatever. What's that stand for? Department of Social Security? Social Services, blah, blah, blah. Welfare. Anyway, so you were calling the wanted. Welfare Department. No, well, I only had some questions. But, like, you know, they don't email people. Because uh-huh. I had some questions. I'm like, well, can you please email me some information? Well, this is the I government, Dave. Know. They are, like, in the dark. They're living in the dark ages. I remember calling the courts and asking if well, I could fax them something. The Thank you, Dave, for the call. I asked if I could fax them. This is not new technology, and they couldn't even take a fax uh, at the courts. But to be fair to some of the government agencies, like the local county clerk, I can email them, no problem. So it just depends on which bureaucracy you're dealing with. There's more on the way here. You can take control of Free Talk Live. This is Mark Edge of Free Talk Live, and I've got something awesome to share with you. I've recently joined Liberty.me. It's an online city devoted to people who love liberty. Break free of the flame wars and bridge-dwelling denizens of Facebook. You deserve better. You deserve a friendly, ad-free social network where you can chat 24 hours a day with like-minded souls around the world. Attend live interactive classes with experts on economics, finance, politics, and money. Access a vast library of books and discuss them with your reading group. Better your life with exclusive self-help guides on investing, self-defense, homeschooling, security, healthcare, saving money, and starting a business. Become a libertarian luminary yourself and get paid in the process by publishing your works on liberty.me. Get tipped via PayPal and Bitcoin. The first step towards freedom is to invest in yourself. Start your free 30-day trial now at liberty.me. I love being a member of liberty.me and I think you will too. The first month is free. Sign up and say hello. Question. Could too many GMO foods and toxins be overloading your digestive and immune systems? Answer, yes. If you're searching for a powerful detox that's gentle enough to use every day, use Pro-EM-1 from Terragonics. Pro-EM-1 is a powerful liquid probiotic that uses good bacteria to suppress pathogens and gently eliminate toxins from your body. A healthy digestive system will cleanse and remove toxins, support weight loss, improve absorption of food nutrients, and aid in controlling yeast and other infections. Pro-EM-1 is made with only non-GMO and certified organic ingredients, has no preservatives, and is dairy, soy, wheat, and gluten-free. Pro-EM-1 is the key to your digestive health. Order Pro-EM-1 Daily Probiotic Cleanse at Terragonics.com, spelled T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com. Or call toll-free, 866-369-3678. That's 866-369-3678. Also available through Amazon Prime. Pro EM1 from Terragonics. Life's getting better. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you you can go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring time into the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm I'm, I'm comfortable here, actually. Whoa, excuse whoa, 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 hey, 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 who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video and audio allowed in this office. Now, I have work today. This is, you ain't gonna make, wait, no, now, wait a minute. Whoa, hey, oh my God, unbelievable, Seriously? unbelievable. Because you're scared of me. What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Democrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. 
What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and we will take your calls here, even in these remaining moments. Enough time for you if you dial in now at 855-450 free. What do you want to talk about? Zoning or a saggy pants ban, which we haven't actually even gotten into yet here tonight. Plus, happy birthday, the latest legal status on the song. It's uh, much been a controversial issue over time. I don't know if we're going to get to it here tonight. But you can always call and bring it up if you like. Toll free number 855 450 free. With you tonight, Ian here, Derek J. And Mark. Derek J. Courtesy of his website, DerekJ.me. And uh, so the, you know, the thing with the whole zoning, uh, it's disappointing. There was an issue recently here at the uh, the Keene Activist Center where Derek J., you and I and some other activists, we spent a lot of time last weekend, or the weekend prior to this last weekend, uh, cleaning out the basement. It had accumulated some stuff over the years, and it needed a, a good cleaning. And, and we did give it a good cleaning. Um, we t- threw out a truckload and several carloads worth of stuff, You know, took it to the dump. And then there were just a few things that were sort of left about uh, the, the side yard. And as a result of that, someone called code enforcement. And I don't know if it was Tuesday or whenever it was, but it was at some point last week, relatively early on in the week, maybe Tuesday, Wednesday at the latest, the code enforcer, one of the code enforcers, the nicer of the two code enforcers, showed up here. No, it was, it was actually Thursday after Rich Paul's was trial. Was it Thursday? Yeah. Okay, so Thursday he showed up here and uh, said somebody, you know, I, well, I wasn't there for the conversation when he showed up. I was there when he showed up after the cleanup. So what had happened? Were you there for it? Yeah, uh, I was there. I saw the car that was marked City of Keene, mm-hmm. and it stopped at the stop sign near the activist center. I said, uh-oh, here it comes. So yeah, grab he, the cameras. He, yep, I grabbed my camera. And, uh, I turns imagine out you weren't the car, only one either grabbing a camera. Nope, uh, everyone around on the porch yeah. grabbed a camera. And Bureaucrats uh, show up to the Keene activist center. They know they're going to be recorded. Yeah, they, he was on several cameras at that point already. So... Uh, yeah, as soon as he pulls into the little driveway on the side, uh, I have my camera on, and uh, he's real polite and just asks uh, sort of sheepishly, like uh, he's, he's got the spotlight on him. All these activists are mm-hmm. just ready, waiting <laughs> to hear what's he going to say. And uh, he says, uh, hey, you know, I'm here, and a neighbor complained, uh, you guys having a yard sale or something? And then waited for a response, and it was sort of painful to hear nothing <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. He's, we don't answer your questions. Yeah, because we don't. Want, no one wants to incriminate. Define yard sale. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like we don't know where this is going. At least I don't. So I'm not speaking up right. about anything. I don't want to uh, incriminate con- myself or are anyone you conducting else. Conducting an investigation. Yeah. So unfortunately, at what I would consider unfortunately, someone else decided to speak up and answer all of his questions, mm. and. Um, it turned out that it was pretty okay that he was just saying, uh, I'm relaying a message on behalf of a neighbor. They were a little upset that it looked a little dirty. It looks like there's some trash out here. Please clean it up. And uh, I thought it was a totally reasonable request. It was Did done he politely. Say, or else, do you have you have two weeks? Did he give a time frame? He didn't levy any kind of threat. We just mm-hmm. said, hey, look, it's it's trash night tonight. We're ready to throw all this stuff away. We'd be willing to just take a, f- a few of the things out of the yard for now we're going to be putting them in the front yard later to be taken away from the trash men but uh hey we're we're willing to work this one out with you you know it, it was a totally reasonable request i just wish that the neighbor had done it themselves right. cuz you know i don't want to be a bad neighbor and in the case of what was happening there i don't think it was anyone's intention to have a, a cluttered yard but you know we had spent the morning cleaning stuff out and then got busy with other things and you know, a few thi- a few things were left around and that's it and it would have been taken care of eventually uh, anyways but yeah you're right it wasn't an unreasonable request and nor would it have been unreasonable had it come from the neighbor there's another neighbor who has no problem talking to me he'll uh, you know there was an issue with some old branches that had been left up against his fence and uh, the fence was kind of, you know, he wasn't able, he said he likes to clean the other side of the fence and he couldn't clean it with all the old branches there. And, mm-hmm. you know, and I had never done anything with these things and they probably are a rat's nest or something like that. And so he brought it to my attention. And I said, I'll get that taken care of for you. 
you know, and yeah. then I took care of it. Everybody, right away. everybody has blind spots, yeah. and neighbors can be really helpful in you know helping us find out what those are. And I want to help out uh, and be a good neighbor. So I, I just wish that uh, my neighbors had spoken to me personally rather than send the government man. Because I was a little afraid, you know, when the government man shows up, you never know what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. So I'm getting this guy's ID. I'm getting his license plate. I'm, you know, shaking a little bit because who knows if threats are going to come down. So eventually but, I presume they would, right? Like had the yeah. cleanup not happened, threats could come down. But, you know, to that guy's credit, he actually showed up, the zoning enforcer, he showed up here the day after that, after the cleanup had happened. And he did just come by to say thank you. Uh, he said, and the, the the bizarre thing was, he said thank you on behalf of the neighbor. So once again, whoever this anonymous neighbor was, you know, issued this thank you through the code enforcer, presuming that's what happened, and he wasn't just doing it on his own volition. Could you imagine what that phone call's like? Oh, hi, uh, hi it's it's me again. Yeah, would you go down and thank them? They cleaned up. I mean, I, yeah, oh, I don't yes, know. ma'am. Okay, I'll, I'll go down. Like I said, he, that was kind of the way it sounded to me, but maybe it was just him doing that as normal and just kind of, he just did it on their behalf without being asked to do it. I don't know if he was asked to thank us, but regardless, he did come by. And, you know, if you're going to be in a job like that, at least approaching with some humility and approaching with, you know, some courtesy is is appreciated rather than what I dealt with the previous time, which was a guy wearing a DEA skull, like a death's head, uh, logoed shirt, polo shirt coming up on my porch. Uh, and you know, basically a lot more of an intimidating character coming up and trying to throw his weight around. Yikes. Yeah. yeah. He didn't have a very good time either. Oh, I was trying to study the body language of this guy, this code enforcer who Mm -hmm. came up to us and, uh, you know, I, I used the word uh, humble because he, he had his hands you know, sort of folded over by his belly. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was almost hiding his badge, but not in an attempt to hide from transparency. Mm-hmm. It was more or less like, I don't want to be here as the government man. I, I'm just sort of trying to talk to you as a person. You know, yeah. He wasn't uh, puffing out his chest. He wasn't lifting his head up all high. It was like a really humble way to a- address another person. I, I was mm-hmm. impressed. I'm willing to give credit where credit is due and encourage you know the government agents to be nicer at the very least you know be more friendly even if they're doing an undesirable job or something yeah. that I don't think should exist and I think we see that more often up here in New Hampshire than in some other places of the country let's talk about happy birthday because we have just a few moments remaining in this particular program we can talk about saggy pants on another night that will continue to be controversial but Mark what's the news boing boing, boing dot net lawsuit Happy birthday is not in copyright, and Warner owes the world hundreds of millions for improperly collected royalties. Hmm. Copyright scholars have long been pretty certain that happy birthday to you is in the public domain, despite the fact that Warner Chappelle uh, claims copyright on it and charges impressive licensing fees to use it in public performances. I've heard they'll even sting operation on uh, restaurants. Those fees, however, are much lower than a copyright lawsuit would be, so everyone just shrugs and pays them. Mm. Until now. A documentary film company working on a movie about Happy Birthday has assembled a huge body of evidence showing that the song has been in the public domain since the 1920s and is suing suing Warner to get them to return the hundreds of millions they've improperly charged in licensing since. This is going to be great. The lawsuit uh, embedded below goes through a detailed history of the song and any possible copyright claims around it. It covers the basic history of Good Morning to You, but it also notes that the Happy Birthday lyrics appeared in 1901 um, at the latest, citing a January uh, 1901 edition of Inland Educator and Indiana School Journal, which describes the children's song as a so-called Happy Birthday to You. So Happy Birthday is actually a ripoff of another song? It's Good Morning to You, isn't it? Good that's what that's what it sounds you. like. Yeah. Good morning to you. Good morning, dear teacher. Good morning to you. Yeah, that's uh, it. Oh, uh, wow. Um, well, we had to sing that kind of thing when we um, when I was in my, my <laughs> private school. <laughs> Did you have to give your teacher an apple? No, we didn't do the apple giving, mm. but uh, we had a pretty pretty traditional school I went to. Okay. So I think this is very interesting, and I mean, you know, somehow yesterday. The world's, um, you know, people were paying money into this company uh, for this, the royalties on this song, and today they don't have to, hmm. or likely they won't have to. And I think it's interesting, these uh, the copyright people are always, 
you know, the, the intellectual property people always predicting the downfall of humankind. You know, and I, I, I really... You we know, can't have VHS tapes. Someone will, uh, that will destroy the industry. Well, now we have, an, but songwriters, this is crazy. This is crazy. This is the downfall of Western civilization. Songwriters, it's their lifetime and 99 years because of the Sonny Bono law. Mm. Are you, I mean, we're still in the realm of uh, 99 years from the songwriter's lifetime on uh, Happy Birthday to You if it was written Jeez. in 1900. This is insane. I mean, at what point should a song go into uh, a public domain? I mean, it's it's crazy. Immediately, as far as I'm concerned, IP is a joke. Intellectual property, it's a it's nonsense. But if we I, don't have time for that. If I sing Garth Brooks' Friends in Low Places here on, on the air, do I owe him money? Well, I don't think you do, but the BMI and ASCAP might see it differently. See you tomorrow night online in the meantime at freetalklive.com. Stop. You can't win if you don't enter, and you actually can improve your chances of winning a prize drawing if you wrinkle up your entry blank. I'm Holland Cook from survivalspeech.com, and I speak from experience. Why this works? If they'll be spinning the drum before drawing, your entry blank will move around more than, and not adhere to, other perfectly flat entry blanks. And if they don't spin the drum and merely reach into a box full of other perfectly flat entry blanks, many of which are sticking together, yours will feel different to the person reaching in. When you win, act surprised. And if you're looking for work, this is a metaphor. For more tips on sticking out in a world where just too much blends into the blah, 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 hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Juicy Juice, 100% juice, providing a full serving of fruit in every four ounces. Visit us at JuicyJuice.com. When it comes to nutrition, kids need both fruits and vegetables every day to stay healthy and grow. For the ideal mix, your kid should have at least one and a half cups of any veggie or 100% veggie juice and one cup of any fruit or 100% fruit juice a day. For more tips like these, visit us at Parenthood.com slash Your Family Today. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Liberty Conspiracy is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates, online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagen with your Liberty Beat for Monday, July 28, 2014. Gold open today at $1,305, silver open at $20.68, and Bitcoin is trading around $576. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Accountable Authority, now offering a public database of police abuse and misconduct. Find them online at accountableauthority.com. In the news, Texans for Accountable Government will be having their meeting tonight, Monday, July 28th, at Sherlock's Baker Street Pub at 7 p.m. On the agenda is Ed Heimlich with Honor Quest, Heather Fazio for Marijuana Policy Project,